Now, what is happening, Nintendo fans? Welcome back to the channel. I am Dial, and this is the spoiler review of Super Mario Brothers. That's right. This is a full-on spoiler review for Super Mario Brothers. That means we're going to be talking about this movie as if you've already seen it in the theater. So here's the spoiler warning right now. If you guys have not seen Super Mario Brothers and you don't want to know anything about it, go watch it in the theater and then come back and listen to this. If you don't want to know anything, because we're going to talk about all the Easter eggs, we're going to talk about all the references, we're going to talk about the future of the Nintendo franchise with Universal and Illumination. So, you don't want to know any of that stuff? Go watch it. Come back and listen to this. You have been warned. Mm -hmm. I also want to remind you guys that I do have a spoiler-free review up on the channel for Super Mario Brothers. So, if you guys want to watch that, go and check it out on my channel. But... Joining with me today, I have a full stack panel, some Nintendo experts, I might say. Joining with me to my immediate, the, 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 you're the, you're on the, you're on the right. Okay. Yes, immediate right. We have fellow YouTuber Ruby Groovy. Dude, yeah, I can't contain myself with this. <laughs> but what's going on, guys? I am ready to get cracking in this freaking review. Oh, I, I'm nice, ready, dude. I'm ready, bro. <laughs> Nice, nice. Also, join with me right below me. I have fellow YouTuber Big B. Oh man, uh, after after talking about Transformers films, it's really it's really good to, to start talking about Nintendo stuff here. Yes, yeah, so we're really finally talking about something that we that we liked. Yes. <laughs> so, oh my god! Last time I was here, last time I was here, I was I was talking about like Eternals, Book of Boba Fett, Andor. I was like, can I get something good for once? Ooh. Mario movie, good, good, good you coward. Ooh. Thank you. Yeah. This is this is good. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, finally some good food. Finally, some good food to eat, not get uh, yeah. stomach, stomach poisoning. But anyway, joining with me, finally on the bottom right of the screen, we have Twitch streamer, and he does a bunch of other things. Beefalo. <laughs> Hi. I'm the one Andor stand on the podcast. I'm the only one with taste here. I don't know about these guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, Andor stands you will not find here, my friend. I'm right uh, here. I'm literally right here. Well, other yeah, than well, you, no, no, no. other than plural. you, he said plural. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, let's not waste any more time. Let us talk about Super Mario Brothers. Spoiler filled. So I'm not gonna go in a whole tie. Uh, I'm not gonna go on a whole tangent of how I felt about the movie because I already did a spoiler for your review. But I'll do. I'll do a quick um, refresher for people th that don't know that I enjoyed the film quite a bit. I saw it twice already, and I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, so I'm probably going to end up being one of my favorite uh, video game movies in general. It got me really enthusiastic about what's going to uh, come down the pipeline as far as Mario and the future of Nintendo films as a franchise. And overall, I gave it uh, I gave it a solid B, and I still stand on that uh, grade. I thought it was pretty good, pretty good. But um, so we're going to start things off a little different. I'm going to have you guys say up front what's your general thoughts on the movie and give your grade up front. So I'm going to start with Ruby. Tell us how Ooh. your general thoughts on the movie and what your grade will be. Bro, I got to tell you, this movie, it, it's it's funny because like originally I, I was walking into this film originally thinking, yeah, that I, it's a Mario movie, so I, I'm bound to have a good time. I know I know there's been all this sort of like controversy surrounding the voice casting, specifically with Chris Pratt's Mario, which I never really had that much of an issue with in the first place, just to give you guys, uh, just to let you know. But uh, another uh, one other thing that I was uh, keeping in the back of my mind when walking into this is that this is an Illumination film. You know, it's not just a Nintendo film. This is Illumination we're talking about. And as far as I'm aware, Illumination has never really had the best track record in good movies. I mean, they've had Despicable Me, like the original Despicable Me, and then they had the two Sing films. That's about it. Because everything else was either like, it, it, it was it was meh or worse. Mm -hmm. You know, like if I had to name off like the immense amount of Illumination films that just did not work. Minions. Uh, the yeah. Grinch for me did not work. Uh, Lorax didn't work. Did you guys know that they made a live action movie called Hop? I saw and that. that was, yes. And that was one of the... I surprisingly saw that movie in theaters as a kid. <laughs> I forgot they did that shit. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> they last make, week. Yep, their, their track record... 
like leans into either bad movies or entirely forgettable. There's like barely like anything in between or beyond better. So whenever we hear something that's like beyond that, it's it starts to like get our gears turning a little bit. And actually, the Mario movie for me is one of those mo- one of those movies where, you know, it, it kind of like illumination is part of the problem here in the Mario movie. Obviously, the movie has like some problems here and there, but at the end of the day, I just can't help but like imagine like me actually sitting in the movie theater watching Mario and friends on the big screen and right in front of me, like as a 25 year old, like this movie is meant to be made for kids, but like it, it, it got me going, dude. I was really excited to see this. I it got me it got me emotional watching this. I could pinpoint like all the references, whether we're talking about like visual references or uh, soundtrack references or anything else in between. Like it, it was just like every like few seconds and few frames, it was just reference after reference, and it, I could not stop smiling after watching it. And it, it definitely knew how to give uh, it definitely knew how to give me a good time watching it. Uh, now, that being said, the film is not perfect. Obviously, there are some faults in the story, but then again, that's more of an Illumination problem, not just a Nintendo problem. Um, I do feel like they missed a couple of an emotional beats uh, that, that they, ju- they just skipped out entirely. They weren't just like, oh, th- this emotional beat just didn't work very well or like it was executed poorly or anything. They just skipped out entirely. And I only I I noticed it the first time and the one and only time because I only saw the movie once. I noticed a few times that they skipped a beat just entirely. I'm like, wait, what? (laughs) It it definitely felt like, you know, we were like jumping from scene to scene or like moment to moment. But then again, that again, that's an illumination thing. You want to know what uh, uh, you want to know what's also an illumination thing. They do this thing. And I think this is probably my biggest negative of the film. And it's not that big but there's always an every illumination film that they make they always have to have an adult character that means absolutely nothing to the story and you just hate entirely you think of any other illumination film you can always pinpoint that one adult character that you just forget about because you just hated them and they meant absolutely nothing to the story are you talking about the the, the Re, what's his name Re, Rex or yeah the the, the, the rival plumber dude? It, oh, it was, no, you no, mean no, um, no, 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 Plumber's no, no, no. Well, I, I guess that was one of them, but it was Mario's parents. It was Mario's dad. Oh, his dad. Yeah. That's, uh, that's okay. How are you gonna shut up Charles Martinet like that? Okay. Well, no, listen. So it's it, more more so the character. I, I, I see. It was the character himself. It wasn't the voice. It was the character no. that they wrote. Like, why did I, you write him this way? He's I was a, an asshole. <laughs> I don't really feel <laughs> much because he was so Martinet. brief. That's not a good thing. You give an asshole character to Charles Martinet. Like that's that's not. Uh, I mean, that, yeah. that just rubs me the wrong way. I don't know about you guys, but the, aside from we'll, we'll that, into that. <laughs> aside yeah. from that, I I had a freaking blast with this film. I, obviously, it, it's not like a perfect like ten out of ten movie or anything, but it's not like it's not like five or six out of ten or anything like that. I definitely feel like this is one of those films that like the critics on Rotten Tomatoes is being way too harsh on this film. Way too harsh. Yeah, absolutely. But, but at the same they're time, about. they're not entirely wrong because the runtime and some of the characters are kind of questionable. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I just wanted to have a good time watching a Mario movie and to see if they could potentially set up Smash Brothers, which we will talk about at some point in this podcast, I assume. <laughs> and they, they definitely succeed that for me. So if you got that B plus in there, B plus or A minus, I'm in between those two. Which one? B plus, A minus, B plus, B plus. B plus, B plus, B plus? B plus? All right, B+. plus. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, let's move on to you, Big B. Your general thoughts and what would you grade this movie? All right, uh, kind of starting from the same point that uh, Ruby did. Uh, I went into this with low expectations, uh, mainly because of Illumination being involved. Yes, I, I I was dogging on the Chris Pratt casting along with like pretty much everyone else, and I, I will admit... After seeing this movie, I have to write like a million apology letters to Chris Pratt because I, I I'm sorry I ever doubted the man. <laughs> yep. And I want every single yes. person to do the exact yes. same thing. Yes. 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 Um, 
and I'm yeah, sorry, no, give a doubt to you. Like overall, I feel like this film is exactly what the Mario film needed to be. Um, but I do feel that yes, there were some emotional beats that were skipped. Like there were some points that I'm sure we'll touch on where this film started to feel like an abridgment of a larger, longer film that had, you know, maybe some more of these emotional moments or had a little bit more development for these characters that felt like it was just condensed into smaller moments because, like, they could or because they thought that children didn't have, like, a long enough attention span for it or something. But, you know, uh, I loved all the references. I was, like, sitting there, you know, grinning in uh, ear to ear pretty much the entire time. Um, it is probably my second favorite game to movie uh, adaptation that I've seen. Uh, the visuals were great. The characters were great overall, with the exception of a few, which, you know, I'm sure we'll get into. And I, I do agree. I didn't exactly like what they did with Mario's dad, but I, I see why they did it. Um, because it's but, you know, amazing. overall, like, you know, yeah, no, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't perfect at all but it wasn't it wasn't bad it was exactly i feel what the mario movie needed to be um so i mean overall i'm, I'm gonna give it a b plus as well because like i i just i loved it i loved it i'm probably gonna go see it again uh and once again i gotta write like a million apology letters to chris pratt for ever doubting the man like honestly after seeing this movie you know, if or whenever charles martinet stops being mario if they're like oh we're gonna get chris pratt and you know uh, Charlie Day to be Mario and Luigi. I would not be opposed to it at all. After seeing this movie, I would not be opposed mm -hmm. to that at all. We gotta take Liam to see this movie. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, see it yet? I, I don't think, I don't he, think has. he has. No, I don't think he has. He hasn't said anything about it. But yeah, no, he he needs to see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. That's our that's our friend for people that don't know who we're talking about. Um, I'm sure you've seen him on Ruby's channel because they do the Smash tournaments. Oh yeah. But uh, but anyway, finally, movie, right? A am I? Am I? I don't think I'm gonna last the first round. But, we got you know. Kazuya. Who that? From Tekken. We got Kazuya. Oh well, I mean that's cool. I still probably won't last the first round, but <laughs> I'll I'll look, come look, in. Look, I'll look, come look, in they... if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you know the inputs, you're good. If you can do electric wind god fist, you're good. You're good. I, was gonna just I like, mean, you gotta do it consistently you know, too. Kazuya, you'll probably make top eight. Hold up, guys. We need to keep this moving. <laughs> That's the joke that I make to everybody. If, if you know basic Kazuya, you'll probably make mm. top eight at every tournament. Well, hey, if I could make top eight, that's an accomplishment right there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, finally, let us get to you, Beefalo. Tell us your general thoughts and what would you grade this movie? Um, So I'm normally the critical one and the harsh one in a lot of ways, or the independently happened one. This film stun-locked me by filling me with so much joy that I could not process anything critically. And I had to really think about, like, and there's definitely some flaws with the movie, for sure. But um, I was too busy distracted by how much fun I was having in a theater for the first time in a long time. How refreshing it was to see a video game adaptation that didn't feel the need to water down the elements of the thing it was adapting. By, you know, adding in, like, um, unnecessary, like, human world stuff like the Sonic films or Detective Pikachu. It just was in the Mario world, with the only caveat being that there's real life Brooklyn, which that dichotomy has always been a thing within the Mario, within like expanded Mario like stuff. So yeah, I was just blinded by the joy. Um, I, I I I hate to do the double scores thing, but critically, I'm like this is like a B for me, like a like soft B. But uh, in terms of sheer enjoyment, it's like an A. I just I, I just couldn't think about what I didn't like for a lot of the film. And I do have some critiques. Like, don't worry, I'm not going to mince words about the things that irked me in, like, retrospect. But the actual viewing experience was literally just me doing the widest smile you could possibly imagine mm -hmm. for the entire duration of the film. Yeah, I think B is a very respectable uh, grading. And I think that's probably going to be a universal grading from, like, I feel like people's excitement on the, I think that's going to be a lot of what everyone else is going to be thinking as well. Oh, yeah. Is that, like, you know, run, they, yeah. they had a lot of fun with the film and, you know, they know how to have a good time with this film, but at the end of the day, like, the movie is not really going to be, like, as incredible or as great as the references, you know, so everyone's just going to say at the end of the day, it's a really fun movie, but it's, it's, it's just pretty good. It's pretty good. 
-hmm. as a movie and filmmaking perspective. Mm -hmm. So, as I said on the top of the review, I brought these three gentlemen on because not only would it be fun to talk about this movie with, with these guys, but they have been playing Mario a lot over the past few years. They are practically experts. You watch Ruby Groovy's channel, and I think, well, all three of these guys' channels, they have played almost every almost every mario game i could oh, think of yeah especially yeah. mario kart like the and super smash brothers those like the main two i see the play so they have a really good knowledge on the mario lore so i really want to get their general thoughts on this movie so it'll be very interesting to see what what they caught as far as easter eggs and references and how faithful it is to the game and everything like that so yeah, that's how it is. So I'll start off this spoiler review with this. So, because we talked about it before, about that it like before that. the script, the script the, as far as the as story, as the story, it's not that you know complicated. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. You know, it's not trying to be super deep. You know, it's mainly just trying to get to the set pieces, get to the references, and all that. So I ask you guys this: Do you guys think? Did you? So I, I guess I already got the, the idea from you guys already, but like, are you, you somewhat satisfied with how simple the plot is? Do you believe they could have done a more emotional, more complicated, more, you know, story-driven plot with this? No. Well, no, let me be real with not. you. The um the the short answer is no. The long answer is fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cause, I mean, because here's here's the thing. A lot of people want to bash the film because you know the story was very thin. It's a Mario movie. D did well, you expect right. Mario's parents to die and then therefore he stops being a plumber and it's, then it's, gets teleported somewhere? Then again, that well, is also Illumination. And they're not going to kill anyone. No, hold on. That's not just Illumination. That's literally the ice cold hand of Shigeru Miyamoto putting a firm clasp around the throat of this film's writers yeah because you're not you're that... not doing another 90s mario movie that's <laughs> no, <laughs> well it's never, not just that never never, I knew when... it was gonna be so up. Never with again. the exception of mario spin-offs when has mario ever been fleshed out in the core games mm. Mm. like that's the, the thing is when i first saw this film get announced my thought was oh my god what uphill battle because the characterization of mario characters is inconsistent it has been like altered from game to game the, even like because miyamoto sees the mario characters as actors in a, in a play and i'm not sure if he's evolved past this but for like games like mario 3 there's literally um like the level design incorporates the shadows they like, drop shadows like a stage set would so mm -hmm. like miyamoto has always seen the mario characters. it's why he also explains um uh mario kart he's like their actors Having a day off is how I put it, I believe. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was like, you guys have got to fight this uphill battle where the only story you get from Mario really is, um, what is it? Like provided Paper Mario or Super Mario RPG. Yeah, but they don't yeah. have that to work with. They have what the, the the core games, the ones that everybody has played, not the spinoffs that Nintendo no longer really recognizes or knows what to do with. Not... Like, because all you have is the silent acting between Mario, Bowser, Luigi, and Peach. So, that that was, like, my big thing when I first heard this film get announced. I was like, oh, my God. This, you picked, like, it's the it's, it, it's like Mickey Mouse, right? Like, we don't see a Mickey Mouse individual film anymore. There wouldn't just be the Mickey Mouse movie. He's more of an icon than he is anything significant. Like, yeah, Kingdom Hearts did a good job with him. But that's an explicit characterization different from what Disney does with them and is comfortable doing with them. It's also so, a different version of Disney. Yeah, that's what I felt like it was going to be with this film. Is that they were going to just... They had to play it safe. And Miyamoto is known to literally wring the details out of Mario games. Like, if there's, like for example, Paper Mario used to have multiple colors of toads with different personalities, and a common complaint is that they got phased out. Because Miyamoto was like, no, toads need to be Toadette and Toad. That, that's it. That's the only designs you have to work with. There's no more Toadsworth, none of this blue Toad stuff. And I was glad to see the movie reincorporate that stuff. And, yeah, it was just... I knew that it was going to be a struggle, like, in terms of the story. There was just no way that we were going to get the deep Mario lore. <laughs> yeah, because there like... is none. Mario has always been shallow. There has never been yeah. a deep 
like core Mario game. I mean, I'm on trying. on top of that, if I can like piggyback off of that, I mean, it's it's a kids film. It's a kids animated yeah. film. It's mm -hmm. you know, it's it's primarily directed at because what Mario games are usually just straight up E, right? Yeah, they're usually yeah. E yeah. for everyone. Yeah, so like you know, e like, like you're you're looking at you know the target audience being like six and up or something like that. So like. You know, of course, the plot's going to be like shallow, and it, you know, and once again, yeah, it is Mario, so you're not really going to do that. So, so I mean, no, the 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 plot was like exactly what it needed to be. The only thing, as far as like I guess story that I can critique is like you know, like we mentioned earlier, some of like the emotional beats that they that are like seeming like it seems like they meant for them to be there, and they just kind of like skip over them. But like mm. but besides that, I mean, it's like it's exactly what it needed to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, I do want to bring attention to the fact that, like, you know, Mario not, or like Mario's, like, f being fleshed out as a character in some of the games. He was arrested. Hey, yeah. Um, see, oh, <laughs> Mario Sunshine. Sunshine. Yep, yep, yep. But yeah, Mario Sunshine yeah, yeah. did okay, try to characterize yeah. him a little bit, I suppose. And yeah. in, um, in, uh, Odyssey. Yeah, Odyssey. Odyssey they, Odyssey, they flush him out a bit. I mean, Galaxy as well. You could argue. Well, Gal well Galaxy. I was gonna say was, Galaxy too. Galaxy it was way more Rosalina there, though. No, that was her. Yeah. Which is why it, it was awesome. Yeah. I mean, I mean, besides, <laughs> well, remember, besides well, that, I'll never forget an example of Miyamoto not wanting more story in his games. He actively pushed against Rosalina having that. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, besides that, I mean, you got development in like you know Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, Luigi's Mansion. Oh, those are considered like si oh, Luigi's Mansion. That's different. That's why Luigi. Yeah. That's why I, I never see people. If you talk to people with a favorite Mario character, like if they know Mario characters, they don't usually pick just Mario. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's, right. you, you pick like... Luigi because Luigi has a personality. You yes. pick. And I pick Toad because I just like Toad's design and he's funny. <laughs> but like, and I think Toad's also like Captain Toad was so endearing. I love that game mm -hmm. to bits. But I think with in, in, in general with Mario, like what do we, what do you, what do you fucking do? Like, like just drop the f bomb. But like, what would you do with that? And that's all I can think about. It's just, I, and they impressed me. I was like, they turned Mario into a character with a core conflict. The, the family is like, you're failing your brother. Mm. Like, that's why I didn't mind so much. They needed to give Mario anything, and I will take. Yeah, yeah. I will yeah. take the dad being a grouch and not being the most like well-written grouchy character that might sit wrong if only because mario needs some kind of an arc because he doesn't have one he's never had one yeah they 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 pulled like a a less in-depth cloudy with a chance of meatballs with the dad oh, yeah oh my god <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Or yeah. i was thinking of i was thinking sing with uh, yeah. The, yeah. the elephant singer yep. never saw sing yeah, I was gonna say it's, it's, illumination. it's, it's one of the better, better illumination films. Yes. It actually is, yeah. Yes. Also, I was cackling. Um, okay, so in the other podcasts I listened to, like, particularly a shout out to Gigaboo's podcast that covered this film. They mentioned that when they had, because before the film uh, starts, they have a trailer. And I fell for this too for a second. Oh my, yeah. Yep. Where they have a trailer about a bird movie. I forgot what it's Migration, I think it's what it's called. I mm. thought it was going to be the Duck Hunt movie. Mm. I was so right. I was like, mm. yo, this is a cinematic universe. They just adapt to the basic Nintendo IPs. But no, it was just, it just happened to have a very type of similar type of a, a bird. Dang, I did but, not get that for some reason. No, I, 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 I thought about it too. I was like, oh my God, it would be kind of, because they're like, the, and now the Mario movie. And then mm. they're like, oh, they're going to do it. They're going to, they're going to do, because also something to note uh, for people in the audience listening. If I recall correctly, I need to go check my sources on this, but I, I'm pretty sure Nintendo opened up their own animation division now they did. since this film. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yes. and I wonder if it's a reaction to this film, and I'm, and that's going to probably tie into a later discussion, but I'm going to drop this point here to come back to. Do you guys think that they'll, if Nintendo's team is just going to completely take off on its own, or will they come back to this film as a base point? So just don't go into that now, but just... As like okay. food for thought. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm, I'll, definitely... I'll write that down so I don't forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll definitely, we'll definitely revisit that later on. Yeah, um, I'll bring yeah. it back up. I'll start bringing it back up. If I remember. Mm -hmm. But yeah, to pick it back up on the the story, like I pretty much, I'm just echoing what you guys said. I don't know what people were expecting with the with the Mario movie that they were expecting some sort of sort of deep story, um, like. Yeah, there there is not much story in the Mario games other than the spin-offs that you guys named. 
um and as you said this is a property made for kids and when i say that a lot of people be like well it doesn't mean you gotta dumb it down like yeah i know i am that person i was actually going to say that and then i held my tongue and i was like hold up it, it wasn't but, even dumbed down fuck. though it's not even it dumbed down i didn't feel like my intelligence was insulted like it didn't feel like there was any like crude humor that they, well, they, that's, they tried yeah. to appeal to kids mm -hmm. and stuff like that this yeah. actually felt like a a very suitable family movie you yeah. know I it felt like, it felt like characters were very natural and organic and yeah. like they were yes. funny because they were so organic instead well, of having to throw in a quick MCU joke like how yeah. all of the other movies are trying but to not, it's not as quippy and also is that like uh -huh, ooh, banana like well, yeah yeah there was there was no yeah. like like this is one of the few illumination films that I can actually look at or well, that I can count among or one of the few illumination films that doesn't have like a butt or fart joke <laughs> Yes, yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I was yeah. half, yep. half of me was expecting them to do a mushroom joke, and I'm so I, glad they did do it. I was they so did a vomit joke. Kinda, they went for a vomit. But... Well, not, a vomit not in the joke. way that we thought it was going to yeah, happen. No, not in the way that we thought. No, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, they did not. But, they, um, they, they hardly picked any low hanging fruit here, which is like, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> right, right, Maybe right. We have hope for you. We have hope yeah. for you yet. And honestly, I was surprised with how much I was invested in the characters with what with, with the with, with what we've gotten, like mm -hmm. it, like Mario, Luigi, Peach, Donkey Kong, Bowser. They actually Dude. felt like characters <laughs> with motivation, yep. with personality, and I was invested in all of them. I was so surprised. I was so which surprised. is which is Even actually inside. another. That's another thing that I wanted to touch touch upon. Sorry, Mike, but no, I, no, I just no, had no, I had to get this right. thought out. Uh, another another argument that I heard about some other people is uh, how odd Bowser's motivation was in this film. That was no. Bowser. That was Bowser's motivation in Odyssey. Yeah, that, that's been Bowser's yeah. motivation. That since was day his one. thing for decades. Since day one, yeah. that's what he wanted to do. That, that was what awesome. the he I heard from Bowser, especially from a certain movie reviewer, I'm going to call her out, Grace Randolph, complaining that it was weird that Bowser wanted to marry Princess Peach. If you played any of the games, Literally. that was always her motive. That's what he if wanted you to do. Original Super Mario Bros. That is literally it. That's literally well, let's also, like, it. Well, I think it's because it's like people are like, oh, it's a human, like, reasoning. And, like, we got to take out the fact that it's not like, your people, I think people like that visualize the marriage as like a literal marriage rather than well, like, well, well, here's like the thing. ownership thing. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. We live in a post Shrek world. You can't, you can't yes. tell me something. You can't exactly. tell me something like that can't happen in a kid's film. Also, we live in a world where, 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 where is it monster fucker is a, is a title that you could label someone with. Right. So I'm yeah. like, yeah. We live in a post world. Yeah, we live in a world where we ship uh, Roger Rabbit and Jessica Rabbit. I want to all be yeah. shut up. I'll be right. shut your mouth. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Like, 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 is it bad like, that I'm guilty of that in some way? I regard? mean, absolutely not. Absolutely no. Not. Not, not. No. No. They're married. They're I literally married. Live, we, we live. We live in a post Whoops. Shrek and post My Hero Academia world. You can't. You can't sit here. <laughs> <and> <laughs> sit. Listen, guys. One example: The Shape of Water. We're done. Yes, yes. Yes, we're done. Yes. We're done. Yep. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yep. That's Avatar. But, Avatar right there. But my, my boy <laughs> Bowser just wants a shape of water scenario for him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's like even with that, even for people that don't know anything about the games, we gotta forget people are forgetting this this is a cartoon world yes. with over the top looking characters with cartoony situations you can't take that so literal well, okay so, 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 cartoony <laughs> expressions yes well, so here's something that i've that i've noticed yeah. is that like people for some reason if it's a property that is like more than 20 years old or like the original fan base are, like our adults for some reason they expect it to like play to those interests and it's like no no <laughs> It's, you don't always have to do that. Right, right. It's not a necessity. Well, I mean, well it still does. Aspect, this film be, doesn't but... not play to those interests either. Like, it, Well, yeah, so, no, it makes references, but, you know. What I was going to say was, so I was going to say real fast, one more thing about, like, I think the critical stuff to this film to note. I feel like this film is like a speed racer where critics just don't get what it's going for. Mm. Uh, where, like, the Speed Racer live-action film is really, really good and really, like, at least in my opinion, I think it's a really good adaptation of that show. I and is the 
Boy, that's a that's a hot take. Hot take. The the movie take. from I'll, I'll agree with you, Beefalo. I'll agree with you on that. Yeah. One. <laughs> no, I think it is a. It's actually a really enjoyable anime film that pushed a lot of like boundaries enjoyable. for what you could do with that. Enjoyable, yes. I think it's good. good. I think it's good straight up. No, I I will. Def- I can defend that film. Yeah, I mean, com- comparing it to comparing it to the source material, I I agree. I agree, Beefalo. I agree. To yeah. be fair, it's not the worst adaptation i of, think it's fun it's light evolution but you know, is that the, i wouldn't even say it's remotely time. bad <laughs> i mean i wouldn't I, say the. i would say i could respect the ambition of speed racer as far from an effect standpoint from an editing standpoint like it is definitely i respect them for going for it i first personally feel like there's certain things that they tried that it felt like assault to the senses i don't know if mm. we're ready for that like the like frames per second like people aren't ready to see a mm-hmm. 60 frame per second movie even though oh, I, God, respect, no. I respect yeah. peter jackson for trying it but i don't think we're our senses are ready for that type of stuff like what it was, was trying to do yeah my, it was definitely interesting for that time too especially my partner who's a cinephile is very much against the i, I made a joke with her i'm like i'm gonna design the first 60 fps short film but she was like no the fuck you're not my camera you get out of here <laughs> Yeah, though, um, to kind of backtrack a little bit because we were talking about like developed characters, even yeah. Kamek, you know, who, who, like, like, like you know, big, like, side character, even he felt like an actual, like, like, personality here. Well, what was like, smart how was how they made him such, like, a, 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 a minion, or not even like a he, minion, he was, he was like an Igor to, like, the, but, the he, he literally like is right hand man to Bowser. Yes, he literally is man, that, and also, that. it's he's doing the Peter Lorre voice. Yes. Yeah, and I was like, yes, it, Bowser. Yeah, yes, yes, perfect mm-hmm. impression, actually. But yeah, <laughs> it's like I think you're running stippy whenever I see that. But um, hear that voice. But yeah, it's you remember Peter Lorre voice, which is perfect for that. And I th- instantly think is without even really characterizing him too much, just giving him that distinctive a character voice instantly tips us off to what he's about. Yes. Which I mm-hmm. think is such a smart decision this film makes. Um, real fast on voice acting, uh, now that we're drifting into this section, I want to say that um, I will be sending apology letters to Chris Pratt as well. Yes. I The moment I like the smile went from like a smirk to, oh my god, I'm so happy, was when he does do the Mario voice for the advertiser. It actually is. Yeah. 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 I know. I, I was sitting there, I was like, I was like, you know. That okay, stuck yeah. up on me. Yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw that like commercial bit that they did and I was like, oh, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. See, all you doubters, all you people saying well, well, out there that you want, doubt I wasn't the American accent for an hour well, and a half. Well, well, no, well, no, I, no. I figured I figured that they were gonna do a gag about that voice. I but I figured it was gonna be like something, you know, just very like low hanging, like, oh you know, he's gonna start I'm like, oh let's go. <clears throat> oh, sorry everyone. You know, but, yeah, but, but no, they actually like it was actually funnier in context where it's like we had to do an ad, we had to make ourselves unique. Yes. Yes, I mean it was also really cool. Like even hearing his regular voice in like conversation, I was like, "Oh yeah. my god, wait a minute, no, that's that's not like just regular Chris Pratt voice. That's like that's like a, that's a something voice. else. It's a that's subtle really voice, good. but it's a it's a, it's well, what it is is that he's good at acting excitable. He's good at like it's actually a good voice, and I was impressed. And I I I think in the media circuit, um, one of my favorite things was when Chris Pratt like because he basically I feel like. After the initial like um after the initial uh, press cycle for the film where he's like ah I had fun stomping Koopas like mm-hmm. he struggled to remember it mm-hmm. then they show they had to go back out there and mm-hmm. the, he wowed a lot of people because he talked mm-hmm. a bit more yeah. about the games in depth and he says something really earnest which would made me happy which it was he was like just give it a try I know that you want us to be faithful to the original games but just give us a chance. Yes. And I was like, okay, yes. that's humble. I can respect this. Yes. I mean, it was also like, like hearing his voice, it, 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 it I, I was able to believe that he was someone from New York. I, I yeah. was able to believe that. It was entirely believable. It wasn't oh. like stereotypical, like, ah, I'm walking or whatever, but it was, it was like, hey, I'm walking leaning towards it. that. It was kind of leaning towards that. They even made a joke about that at one point earlier yeah. on in the film, but like, it, it, like, it was believable. It was, it was, yeah. it was believable. It was entirely believable. And uh, the other shout out for voice acting. God damn it, Charlie Day is Luigi. Not even doing a different voice, just being himself. That was there was no more perfect to casting. Perfect. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, 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 that, that was a, that was a casting that I was like, oh, a hundred percent. He's got that hundred percent. And he proceeds to crush it in the dust. (laughs) I was like, Mm -hmm. oh my God. And meaning to not meaning to go back on something, but, uh, when talking about the Mario commercial, uh, I just really love how you you knew that this film had so much confidence in themselves when they do that commercial. And then right after that, when they go back to doing their normal voices, like their movie adaptations of the Mario and Luigi voices, Mm -hmm. you know, saying, you know, was my voice really all that good? And then like immediately you look to the right and it's Jumpman. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's Charles Martinet doing it's a perfect. I was like, okay, this this film, this film, this film is, has got my attention, bro. Like these guys, these guys know how to make moments. It was funny that they did separate Jumpman from Mario because that does one, on one hand, it makes sense. sense. In the Donkey Kong games, that like Mario was originally Jumpman. Yes. That was like his original identity. Mario dies, I think, in the Donkey Kong Jr.? Or is it oh, it? Donkey like, Kong Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sequel mm. game that they did, yep. Mm. I'm like, I can imagine Jumpman going through that fate instead of Mario being yep. the one that goes yep. through that. It, I mean, also speaking more about, like, the voice cast, I mean, like I, like I said, the only one that I didn't really have faith in was, was Chris Pratt, but, like, everyone else absolutely just... There everyone was one. in this movie, like, crushed there was, it, man. There was no, one that didn't. One that was kind of distracting cranky like, kong oh i was gonna say donkey kong but cranky kong no no i mean like no donkey like, kong fits no donkey so kong well. i was i was i was i don't know about that i'm actually i'm actually i mean i mean i i mean i respect the opinion but i i i the second i saw that casting i was like that that's perfect for donkey kong honestly. Dwayne, i'm with you on this for one me, actually anyways. i'm actually with i'm actually with you on the, seth, this it, just felt like such like a I, I could just imagine like seth rogan actually like doing like when they first announced him being the voice of donkey kong i could just place his laugh over donkey kong's face and i just yeah. said yep yep, yep that's yep, not yep. only is that a good casting that is illumination ass casting right there yes. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. it sure <laughs> was an illumination <laughs> casting it sure <laughs> was <laughs> now, now i'm not saying that seth rogan was bad you know yeah it's like for what he did with with donkey kong it was entertaining but as you guys said with the other voice actors with chris pratt charlie day I, um and a Joy Taylor, especially Jack Black. I there was a point, there was a good period of time where I forgot that was the voice actors. The whole time I was being reminded, "Yep, that's Seth Rogen. That's Seth Rogen's mm. voice coming out of Donkey Kong." Like that's, that, that's, that's fair. fair. That's, that's fair. fair. I, I had I had the same feeling, especially when he did his laugh in the movie, which is like, oh, okay, you know, that, 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 that's it's literally so, Seth Rogen laugh. Yeah. 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 But at the same time, but at the it's same the time, when I, when I, yes, so yes, well. at the same time, that's like, what makes like, it funny. Yeah, but at the same time, like you know, this is coming from someone who like wasn't a big fan of like his voice in like his actual TV show, but like you know, like. Like, like, seeing this movie, I couldn't imagine a different voice coming out of that Donkey Kong. I, cu- I couldn't imagine yeah. them casting anybody else for that Donkey Kong. Yeah, Any, that's what was good. Like, other versions of Donkey Kong, maybe, maybe. But, like, considering how Donkey Kong is kind of characterized now and how they did him for this movie, I could not have imagined someone else playing that character. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, Cranky Kong. Let's talk about Cranky Kong because you brought it up. Okay, that was, yeah, I, that was probably the most distracting. Like, who that, is yeah, voice? that one I'll agree was a little. That was Fred Armisen, and Fred Armisen is always like I know he's a funny guy according to people that are like critics. I never found Fred Armisen that entertaining as an actor. Like, I found him funny in Parks and Rec when he was doing the um, Argentinian um, diplomat bit, but like. Venezuelan, sorry, yeah, Venezuela, um, mm-hmm. diplomat bit, but that was the only time I ever really found him amusing, and I had hope. I was like, I heard great things about Fred Armisen. I, I tried to watch Portlandia, and I didn't really like that show that much. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna give him a chance, and he just let. He was the worst voice in the film because, it, like, and it was by yeah. a wide. It wasn't mm-hmm. horrible. Like, it wasn't like horrible, horrible. But it's like when you're in a cast that has somehow managed to almost seamlessly slip into their roles there's cranky kong just yep. not being that funny not really charming me that much was it again it was just the surprisingly lackluster and i know some people said that toad was annoying and i'm like no toad is perfect no, oh. toad was great. no, toad no was that fine. was fantastic you... <laughs> toad was great. No, I, no i mean I'll, I'll agree with you with uh, with cranky kong like that was 
I, I didn't mind the voice, but it, it was distracting compared to like everyone else. That was like, oh no, that's not really that... cranky Kong or any like personally, um... personally. And I know that this is probably like a oh you know he's ju- he's jumping to this because this would probably be like you know in a like low hanging fruit pick or whatever. I personally would have picked Danny DeVito, but that's. <laughs> No, we actually, better. He something better. I didn't know was yeah. that uh the the blue shell Koopa was voiced by the same voice actor for Robin from oh. the Teen Titans and yeah, Teen oh, Titans. Oh, I thought that voice sounded familiar. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have I, not. I noticed that after the fact. I looked yeah. it up. I said, "Why does that voice sound yeah. familiar?" It's, it's like, literally it's like Robin blue, from Teen yeah, Titans. Yeah, the second you said blue shell, I was like, "What a coincidence!" Well, I actually thought the blue shell was funny because. Because the same director who did Teen Titans Go the movie. Did yeah, it's it's the same makers. Seriously, from Teen Titans yeah. Go, and that was yeah. something. Yeah. That, that was another thing that I was skeptical about is that they got the creators of or like the the the, the leaders of like the Teen Titans Go series to make this movie. I was like, uh, I, don't I mean, know about I, honestly, that. Teen Titans I would, Go. I heard that. If I, I would have heard that, that, I probably would have been more on board with the film going into it because I saw the Teen Titans Go to the movies. In theaters, I saw that in theaters, and I actually, I actually really liked that. Film. I know a lot of people did. I thought was I was gonna good. hate it, and I liked it's not it. Bad. It's not bad. Teen Titans Go was literally don't knock it until you try it. The TV show, even because the only problem is <laughs> because it's built on the corpse of one of the greatest animated shows in television. No, I, I, I still feel like a poison is around it, even though I know it's fun. I mean, I mean, I, I, I real quick with that show, I. The main reason that I can't really find myself really getting into it is because they constantly spit on the legacy of the, yeah, the original show. Yeah, they and constantly it's constantly mock it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's we're like, not too tight, but I'm like, they, you're gonna scream. Keep, I'm gonna scream. Keep, yeah, and they keep <laughs> they keep teasing us like, oh, maybe we'll do the next season. Oh, you know, this is post credit scene. Maybe we'll do the next season. No. Well, literally, oh, the movie. Go the see movie, the tights. Go the movies. We'll do another season of the yeah, regular. Yeah, yeah and they, they were like, they were like, we'll bring them back. For uh, it a was, quick collaboration movie of Teen Titans Go versus Teen Titans, it's like ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's like they refuse to just give people what they want. But the thing is, because Teen Titans, I don't know, I I never finished that show, so I don't know how the show ends up ending. It, it ends I'm on like, it ends on a cliffhanger. Oh, yeah. painful, agonizing. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. so painful. It ends with Beast Boy trying to get. Uh, do you mind the spoiler on that? Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind. Okay. okay, okay. It ends with mm-hmm. Beast Boy trying to get Terra back. Oh wait, like, I did see the everything. ending of the show. Oh and god, I thought that was the ends. ending. That is where it ends. Mm-hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm having a stroke. Off into the distance. That I'm is having it. a fucking stroke. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't it. realize that was the last episode. I thought there was more after that. Oh fuck! That is the, that I is saw the, the ending last... of Teen Titans. I did. They made I a joke realize... about that in Teen Titans Go too. That is the last shot of the show. I could feel my memories rewriting themselves because I was like, "Oh, next episode." I just, I just thought I stopped watching TV at the point in time. No, that was the end. You're right. Oh Dude. my god. Why did that they? Was, end? They should have was... ended the 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 show with the the Titans together episode. Well, well, that was well, the true they, ending of Teen they, Titans. They were going <laughs> to keep going. They originally were going to keep going, and they were like, "Well, it's not bringing in as many good ratings or everything." And then Cartoon Network just fell off. Yep, they had like then, one or two well, good shows since then, and then they fell off. Well, remember that was when they tried to do CN Real. Cause I remember, I, I remember now. The memories are flooding back to me now that you said yes. this. CN Real was the thing that was uh, they were trying to push at the time. Yes, the last like with like I liked Gumball, but with the but like I will stand on the, I will die on the hill that the last good Cartoon Network show was Adventure Time. No, Max. no, Max. Mm, not okay. Not, KO not, regular not, show. I, th- I think it's in no, no, waves. no, 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 because regular show ended before Adventure Time. That's the only reason why I say Adventure Time was the last good show. Oh, so the I count last regular good. show among that. Sorry, OKKO okay, came out afterwards. I defend OKKO. Okay, that was pretty good. OKKO okay, had some moments. Listen, I, I any show that references Mega Man as religiously as that show does, and Dragon Ball Z, I have a, I have a bias towards. I can't, oh, I can't. I, 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 I respect them for referencing Samurai Jack. Yes, I respect they had an episode that was literally a homage to all the past Cartoon Network yes, shows. But that is all I'm giving it. Like overall, I can't say that that show was good, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, that, I yeah, I can That's why I say that Adventure Time with like it's the last good of one. Gumball. That it, that Adventure Time was like the last good show. I'm trying to think what else have I seen in Cartoon Network since then. I, I heard Mal Mal was. Oh no, hold on. Um, wait. Oh, Be a Puppy Cat wasn't on Cartoon Network. That, that was actually an adult show. Oh, I'm trying to think. There was something else that came out that I also enjoyed from Cartoon Network, but now I can't remember. Oh well, Lost to the Eons, gone forever. 
Let's Steven Universe. Topic, Steven Universe. Yes, Hold yes, on. Yes, yes. <laughs> back, back, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Steven yeah. Universe is the last. Let's talk about our childhood dying. Let's. Yeah. yeah let's talk about our childhood. Being but revived okay, again. let's talk about yeah, let's talk about some of the references the movie makes because that. Well, hold on. We movie. didn't even get through all the characters yet. Yes. Oh God damn it! You're right. Uh. Yeah, Peach. Let's talk about what you guys think about Audie Taylor. Oh, I love Peach. I love the shit out of Peach. She was actually badass. Yeah, I love that they didn't make her a damsel in distress and kind of made her like a super princess Peach kind of princess Peach, where it's just like, oh, I'm I'm, I'm, going to save myself. That was Super Mario World Princess Peach. Yeah. That was Mario World Princess Peach. I'm surprised with our Toad. Also, speaking of of Toad's references, I want to go back a second and say, um, uh, I was gonna, I thought they were gonna make a joke about Toadette turning into a Peachette. At one point, I was re- I was ready for them to make a joke about like implying pe- baby Peach is like a baby Toadling or whatever. But no, they just they just um it, spoilers for the film, of course, it's a spoiler cast. When uh, Peach kind of wistfully explains, like, yeah, they just raised me as one of their own. I don't even know if I am human. Like, oh, you're a human came off as like a you're one of those. And like, mm-hmm. how would she know? Is she mm-hmm. one? We don't know. And I think there's a lot to explore with that. Mm-hmm. And I also think her performance was great. I think the writing for Peach was great because it's very easy to write a character who just says that they're a girl boss and does nothing. Peach is just actually a badass who just takes action. Mm-hmm. And it makes sense for this universe. And I'm like, this is how you write a grounded female character who's like taking charge. Oh, like, also... She's actually in action. She's not just speak. She's doing things. She's proactive. Yes, like I, I will say, uh, real, real quick. I also really love that, like, you know, uh, toward towards the end, she has like her whole like last stand thing that she does, like just defending the castle. It's like, oh, oh, okay, yeah, you got that. But mm-hmm. kind of like, cause you saying the the peachette thing just reminded me, uh, because Bowser explicitly talks about or mentions like that Peach's crown is like, uh, impossible to move or whatever. Like, like I forget exactly what he says. Like immovable. I was like. Are they gonna do a Bowsette joke? <laughs> oh my god, I, I would be I would be so ready for that. Not yet, I, not yet. I, I, I don't honestly think that... would have felt that would have been a little bit out of place, and I would on, I would blame that on yeah. I would blame that on on Illumination. Yes. yes. What I'm gonna say is that that would be the uh, what is it? it? It's too galaxy brained. They aren't brave enough to commit to such a thing. <laughs> the rating was too young. It was listen. We, we're not we're not ready to indulge into the dark the dark depths known as Bowsette and Peachette. <laughs> that's deep. That's too deep of lore. Oh, that's like that's like that's on the same tier as the foot dragon from uh, Paper Mario. That's too yep, deep. Yep, <laughs> we can't but, go there. Yep. But uh, no, no. Peach was an amazing character, and I, I loved that she yes. was just like a like a, I'm gonna handle things. I like like her whole thing wasn't she was gonna send other people to do that or I'm just gonna follow along so that you do this. It was I'm going to go get the Cranky Kong's army. I'm going to face down Bowser. I'm well, going to evacuate the city and defend it. I, 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 call, I it's, it's it's a proactive character. Like mm-hmm. they didn't. It's like it's so easy for people to just like we want to have a strong female character. But we don't know how to go about that. Which again, I'm a writer, so I understand it's. If you're not familiar with like writing people like people, if you're if you're someone who just doesn't know like if you're just like sitting in a boardroom and you're like we need to appeal to the female audience, what do we do? And you just don't know how to write a female character. I understand the temptation to just make a character who is like I'm so strong, I'm so great, and then mm-hmm. still have the plot happen like normal. No, she's actively pro. One, she's proactive too. We need to talk about the sequence where she does the obstacle course because the shout out to the game where she does the. Mm-hmm. The, the drift yes. down with their with their uh, dress was such a neat touch. Characterized her well and was graceful. And I was like, "This is how you use physical action to characterize somebody really I, I effectively." Feel like, I feel like you could lump that in with like the references, though, because like yes, you, you know, can. Like, yeah, because that, well, that was just that was, it was so about much. The, well, the thing is, the film is smart because it intertwines the references in, or it's like there's explicit references that are just there for fun visual gags, but there's references to the games that help characterize these people. Mm-hmm. Like Mario being form. agile comes up like in the intro sequence where they're like running through uh, Brooklyn and like Luigi can't keep up with Mario. Mario is platforming and it's like a physical comedy gag. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is so smart. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, yeah, because well, that, yeah, that way it doesn't like feel like it doesn't make sense when suddenly he's like, oh, I'm doing all this cool stuff and everything. It's like, oh, you 
no, no, no. He's like, already agile. He's like an agile dude who's trying. Who's like, come on, Luigi, keep up. We gotta, we gotta get to this. Uh, and also, I love that opening sequence too, with like, oh yeah, 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 screwing with them. We'll talk about that when we go over some of the scene, of our favorite scenes of the film because it's one of my favorites because I love that the dog is recur. It comes back later. Yeah. And, and but I like I loved that um they used that to characterize Mario his platforming ability. They gave Luigi the fear thing immediately with the trees being like a Luigi's Mansion callback. But like the fact that he's scared makes sense. He got dropped into the actual worst possible location he could have got dropped into when they cross over to the Mushroom Kingdom, and he's the little, like, he's, like, the little brother, and it's, like, you're dragging him down with you. I like that the outfits that they wear are a part of their business. I think that's smart. It does explain why they got a peculiar appearance that's iconic, mm. and they're like, oh, this yeah. is just our brand. I'm so glad that they, they explained that, too. That was one of my worries, because, like, before they, when they announced they were making a Mario movie, I was like, how can you these characters look so weird and distinctive how yeah. are you going to make that make their appearance feel plausible and the, they did they uh, did yeah i mean the one time where it was like kind of like a small little bit like oh you know like that's kind of weird that they were always like that was like you know the whole flashback when they were babies which i appreciate them using yeah, the baby, baby mario baby, baby Luigi. Mario. Yeah. oh, yeah, the baby, oh my god the Another, yeah. best scenes from I, that, I, god. I, that that scene almost got me emotionally that, 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 that did give so, me emotional yeah. because i main baby luigi in mario kart yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no i wasn't was uh, yeah double dash. i was so not ready for them to even go there at all i was like sitting there like oh they're never gonna touch yeah. on this yeah. and then yeah. like here comes the baby designs i was like like of course you're gonna do the baby design either like is this a tear is this emotion do i feel am i am i is that what i'm feeling Honestly, I was expecting them to wait for, like, if Mario had kids, that they would have Baby Mario and Baby Luigi. But they were like, no, we're going to have yes. Mario and Luigi. That, that, that's how they were when they were babies. Yeah, like, yeah, okay. Yeah. It was just, it was just <laughs> straight up, like, like okay. just straight up, like, just the, like, 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 they just took the models from, like, Mario Kart and just put them in the movie. And I was like, that's well, so it was galaxy, <laughs> a galaxy brained decision. Yes. Mm-hmm. They, they made an actual artistic choice. They could, like, they made an artistic choice that benefited the film. It was a fun reference that also was one adorable because those designs are adorable. What a great choice! And to, it just, oh man, I, I just plus, plus the plus they call back on it later with the end of the film with uh with Luigi defending Mario, and I was like, oh okay, let's oh yeah. yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, that... yeah, there was a payoff. There was a payoff to it. Yep, that's set up payoff. payoff. But uh, you have to go back to Princess Peach. I, I 100% agree with you guys. I thought she was absolutely great. And yeah, I love that they gave her more of a character. That they gave, made her more proactive with the with the stuff with uh, Mushroom Kingdom and Bowser and stuff like that. She wasn't the damsel in distress. And I don't understand all you people out there that want Princess Peach to be a damsel in distress in this movie. Even though you're just complaining that there's not enough story and plot in this film. So I understand what you're complaining about. But anyway... But what I what I also loved what what Beefalo kind of referenced earlier is that uh, there's a lot of strong female characters they try to write in movies and it feels like they don't know how to write them properly. Mm. <laughs> Captain Marvel. But I was just about to say. <laughs> yeah, ca- yeah. But this movie did a great job of writing this character because she was proactive. She was getting stuff done. She was independent, but she wasn't a bitch about it she was still mm-hmm. so likable and enjoyable mm-hmm. to watch she didn't give mario shit she didn't give anybody shit she was being I helpful think... with everybody like that's how you make a good female character you can make her strong but you have mm-hmm. to make her likable as well. i don't think again, i think uh, i think I, I don't think a lot of the problem with female characters is they turn into bitches per se I a, think lot the bigger... <laughs> a lot well, of them are a lot of yes mm-hmm. i agree <laughs> yep. mm, i'll say from okay from my perspective i think a lot of the problem is they just yeah, I don't think it's bitch, they get bitches they turn into. It's more like we forgot to write a character here with a personality. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, I, I think, I mean, and that personality or, I mean, is bitch. I mean, no. I mean it's, also, yeah. it's, it's also that like a lot of the time to show that they're like strong female characters, you have something like Endgame where it's like, oh, here's a shot of all the female characters. Right, However, do something cool and then go in the background. <laughs> no, we, yep. we, didn't, we didn't flush them out very much. 
Well, yeah. I think about like I think about um, what is it? Um, Wonder Woman, where I really enjoyed that film because Wonder Woman, despite not again, despite that film being kind of dreary, at least they tried to uh, kind of flesh her and give her like something, some bit of a personality. Not very good. Gal Gadot is not a strong mm. enough actress to really characterize her well, and I actually am excited for what the DC EU is going to do now for the first mm. time, because mm. with, with mm. speculative casting going on, I'm like it might be time to get a real actress well, in here. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens but, when James Gunn has you know actually but, puts it out there. Yeah. Who's going to be yeah. Who. But okay. But back to the movie. Um, yeah. Another character we could discuss. Toad. 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 Yes. Little sidekick. Yes. Keegan yes. Michael Key really surprised me as Toad. I yeah. did not expect that. It now, was the I... right annoying. It was the right amount of annoying. It yeah, was right... like, it, it, like it, it was the kind of annoying where it's like, you as the audience don't really get annoyed. <laughs> yeah. Like, you, you you feel the characters. The, the, if you the did too much of him, him, it's like a sauce. If you put too much on, it ruins the whole thing. But if you put just mm. a little Toad in there, no one's really upset. And that's what I felt was it was like he was just balanced enough. Mm-hmm. Also, where... um... Just before I forget, uh, I wanted to point out, like, kind of one quick little thought going back to Peach. For anyone who wanted to have the damsel in distress, Peach, she does have one moment where she goes, Mario. And that's yeah. it. Well, she, has to, you know, be happy, she still is a damsel. And the thing is, what's interesting is that it's a damsel as she puts some of the situation. Like, she's like, he bows against her ultimatum. I'm going to destroy everything if you don't give in. And she makes that call. So it's like a, um, and she still gets the upper hand on him in that sequence too and she fights and everyone gets a chance to be the big hero and that's also another thing with this film too is that everyone gets a chance to play the hero in it at some point like yeah. they all play a role i also like that toad um ca- I, also, I like the captain toad visual okay when toad first appears they play the uh lay motif from captain toad yes so i was like yeah yes yes, <laughs> yes. And it's yes. somebody who i also, I also that do like how so they much. made uh, i do like how they made this design of toad uh, more distinctive as the Captain Toad design. Yeah. Yep, they gave the backpack from any of the other Toads. I also love that with Toad, they don't exp- uh, they don't explain this, and I'm glad they don't. That like he's named Toad, but then all the other people are also Toads. They're just all Toads. I, I love that they, yeah. I love that they yeah. don't go into that. They're just like, oh, you know, what's your name? Well, Toad. Oh, you know, the, game, the movie does a good job of just being like, oh, that's a power up. It just makes you stronger, and mm-hmm. we know uh, that's all you need to know. And yeah, that's what the yeah, critics yeah. Like, get hung up on is they're like, why does it make Mario stronger? And I think, I, I, have to read, I have to go read critical reviews. I knew this one was going to get favorable reviews because the Sonic movie didn't really get favorable re- reviews. Yeah. It was like, I think, again, for me, it's just like Speed Racer. Sometimes it, a film adaptation of something will yeah. make artistic choices that refer to the original medium that don't quite work in cinema. Or they do work, and you just need to swallow that it's a hybrid of, like, it's a different set of conventions it's borrowing from. Yeah, and the film, don't... Ahead, I think the film succeeds at that, where it's like it just, you know, oh, that's a power up. Oh, um, these fire flowers just give you fire powers. We don't need to go into the science of it. We don't need to think too hard about it. It just yeah. does that. Yeah, not everything needs to pull a transformers where it's like, oh, you know, why why does the the you know Allspark give them life? Oh, well, you see, you know, because it was from the core of Cybertron and Transformium and. It's like, Dude, why you? Why did this Megatron transform into a gun when he's actually <laughs> ten feet tall? Yeah, just, just <laughs> suspend yeah. your disbelief, please. <laughs> Let it go. No, the story ha- will be strong. Have remember, to know everything about yes. everything. <laughs> yes, just remember what it's like to be a child for just yeah, an hour like the, and a half, please. Yeah. The story will be stronger. <laughs> These critics lost their childhood a long time ago. I know. Ago, I know. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I. Um, but yeah, uh, King of Michael Key is Toad. I liked him a lot, and mm-hmm. yeah, he and that uh, he did feel distinctive out of the other Toads. And mm-hmm. I'm glad they didn't explain why is, is he called Toad, but there are other Toads. Like it, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And all of the <laughs> other know? Toads had different voices as well. Yeah, well, actually, they all had distinct personalities. Like Elder Toad, yeah. you had the like. Oh my God, toad. the blue, the blue the deep voice one. Toad or maybe whatever. fucking. Yeah. Made me fucking lose it yeah, when he's yeah. just like, "Good luck, princess." He's like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> the mushroom okay. kingdom will be destroyed. <laughs> I was so yeah. not ready for that to happen. That was such a good gag. You, you, had, you had you had drawing voice choices like that, like you had. It was um... it was it was a humorous contrast. And then also you get you hear the real Toad voice when Toad is like, "Hey, Toad," and yeah. then the other Toad goes, "Hi," like for yeah, the like, yeah. it's the actual. Because I was wondering if they were going to do that because, um, for real-world context, 
at the Universal, Stu not Universal Studios, but the Mario Land in Japan, I think, or I think it is America now. But at, there's a America. Mushroom Kingdom cafe, and they have uh, Toad's voice actress read off what she's cooking for you. And, and you could hear she's struggling, but I was there, I could see Nintendo was trying to experiment with making their voice actors actually do full voices. And she does do, I think it's Jen Taylor, does do the full Toad voice. And so it was nice to hear in the movie, they got her back for that cameo. Yeah. Or is, I don't know if it's a clip or if it's actually her just in the booth going like, hello. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, they, like, yeah, like, they have, like, a, a couple of those other, like, giant voice choices, too. Like, the, the King Penguin dude. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. I, I, I think the the... taste of our fury. Right, right, right. You, you, you had the, uh, you had the somewhat common gag of, like, the very dark dreary personality for like a luma this little, this little well, this, it's, this, oh that little that little that star that was that was that the child yeah, oh my god yeah. that was, well, that was, it was it's funny too because lumas because of the nature of their existence where they get, just get launched up into space and explode to stars stuff like that it actually makes perfect sense as to why he is like that as it's like on top of being funny and endearing it it just makes sense for yeah. lumas to be like existentially depressed it kills it's like, you oh. and a, a, a child voice is coming out of it. That's what yeah, makes that, it that, yeah, like, yeah. That, that, yep. that, That's been done before. It's not an innovation, well, but I love it. I love I it. I gotta <laughs> say, what makes this film also... It, it, the thing that Luma that makes me, reminds me of the fact that Illumination did this film is that Illumination usually has the cute character they like to market. And I thought the, to the Toads are that a little bit. Like, we're so adorable! Like, mm -hmm. like that, 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 that. there's that part. But... One of the things that got to me was that, like, the Luma, I felt like, was actually that character where they were like, oh, no, the Luma's depressed and talking about how the world's going to end. And I was like, that's your cute <laughs> character. That's what they're going to market a lot. And mm -hmm. when they use it as the stinger, too. Yes. I got to tell mm -hmm. you, the, the more I hear about that, the more I see that Luma, like, in the cage, and the more I hear them, like, talk about stuff, the more I just keep in the back of my mind, like, okay, the end credit, there's two end credit scenes for this film, and one mm -hmm. of them is going to have Rosalina. I'm, like, mm -hmm. I'm, this is 100%. But and then that, they didn't have it. Like, you know, no, not yet. Not yet. Like, well, they, they didn't have it, so that's, that's fine. <laughs> my head canon is that that Luma is what a Luma is what happens to a Luma after it's been like knocked off stage and smashed several times. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what it feels like an ultimate pain. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say now, when you the... go for the Luma specifically, that's what you're doing to the Luma. All right, remember that. Yeah. Well, the Luma yeah. wants to die. It wants to get lost off stage. It needs to go. Yeah. <laughs> How can it's, you sell toys for that? Well, you, you squeeze the you squeeze the toy, and then it says all those things. I'm like, yeah, yeah that's for yeah. kids. <laughs> there is no release. Well, the only freedom is the sweet release of death. It, it, it's, it's it's like the 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 Cassie Lang meme of like it's so uh, it's so ugly, or in this case, it's so terrifying. I love yep. it. I love it. <laughs> God bless. Oh my God, so great, and, so great. Yeah. Um. I was going to say about the Luma, too, is that that's all the hit we need towards Rosalina. Because also, with Peach being like, I don't know what I am, that leaves a lot of room for, like, Rosalina to pop up well, and be she, like, she also, or Daisy. Or well, Daisy. she also just directly so, says, there's a big galaxy yeah, out okay. there. And, like, I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, okay. That's, we're already, yeah. not, we're already, because that's, well, uh, Galaxy was, like, the big story Mario game that wasn't yeah. Sunshine. Mm -hmm. And well, Sunshine yeah, doesn't really go anywhere. The, the only like characters that we got in Sunshine was like Bowser Jr. Bowser Jr. Yeah, that, that well, was about it. And though. Dark Dark Mario, I guess. <laughs> We're saying well, like, yeah, Dark yeah. Mario is associated with Bowser Jr. Isn't that like mm -hmm. essentially Bowser Jr. though? Yes. Yes. Anyway, yeah. Yes. So. Oh yeah, I'm so, I'm so glad that you brought it up because they, one of the characters that surprised me that I that we didn't get to see from this film, and I thought that they were just gonna save it for the film's release. No Daisy. Yeah, we well, we, we got Pauline, but no Daisy. Yeah, Pauline, well, Pauline was, as a cameo, was a cute but cameo. like no Daisy. Because I saw the Mayor Pauline in the background, but I didn't think they were gonna actually show her. Yeah, and then Pauline, they her show and, her. Uh, her and Yoshi. I mean, you saw a bunch of Yoshis yes. in the background, yes. but like mm -hmm. the, the main Yoshi, like they're te they tease that at, yes. the, at the very end credits. So it's yes. like, oh, for sequel. Yoko. Also, also, real quick, Pauline is the mayor of Boston. Uh, no, I mean, it, New Donk City. It's hey. like a like a Mario like New York City. That's probably yeah. what yeah. they have as their. And now, that's probably what Pauline they did in the mayor of Brooklyn. Film. Yeah, is that like th their Brooklyn is New Dong City? Oh, yeah. Well, that's what, what it is, is that it is you know? Brooklyn. It is real world Brooklyn, but it's like 
they're what they've done is they've combined the design tropes of because what it is that in the Mario universe, because also there is one issue I have with the film's design choices. Now I think about it, the people that are not Mario characters, like in the beginning, there's the family that they um go to Pumler House. Oh. Those are very Illumination character designs, and they're jarring against them oh, very. Yeah. Because like the Mario designs are kind of fit to Illumination's mold, but they still have that very Nintendo touch to them. Mm -hmm. Those characters, like, it, it's funny how they explain Mario too, where they're like Mario is just short. Like, mm -hmm. That's why his height's like that. And short, I kings. The short kings. Short yeah. kings. Yeah. We for Mario is for the short kings. Yes. As a mid height king, I am. Um, I'm a Luigi. I, I, I get Luigi, but uh, for short kings, we get, they get Mario. But, um, no, I, I was really impressed by that choice to bring in, like, they right, bring in Pauline, it establishes very quickly that some people just look like that. Some people yep. just look more important than others. Yeah. And it, it's just funny. Where I was like, okay. And then Main Foreman Spike. Well, what's interesting, Foreman Spike's design, again, another reference to the, uh, wrecking. And also, the whole intro sequence, um, the platforming sequence, Every single Mario game has a bit to it. So, like, he'll do the, uh, he does the running hands from the Mario uh, 3 and Mario World. Is it Mario 3? He does the um, Wrecking Crew bit where he jumps and jumps up and down scaffoldings. Yep. Which is what Mario was in that. Um, Foreman Spike appears from Wrecking Crew. I like that nod as well. It was like, there's, there's a lot of that and other references in Brooklyn because I think bringing other references that they come up throughout the story is there's, the uh, Punch Out Cafe, which uses the Punch Out Wii artwork. I saw that. I was yep. so mad. I was like, "You guys should have designed it." Well, I guess Nintendo didn't want people thinking there's gonna be a new Punch Out, which there should be. We're It'll ready. Be a punch Out movie. Mm. Oh, I would. Oh God, that would actually be good. Do, yeah. they, do you get Mike Tyson? Do you get? Mike I don't know Tyson? if you do. No. I don't know if you, you do. get Mike Tyson no. to voice. You get Mike Tyson to voice Mr. Dream. Probably. Probably. Mm. They, um, yeah, I mean, they, 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 they yeah. also had like little things like uh, when they go into the sewer, you had the sign that said level one dash two. And then, yeah, right, when yep. you see that mm -hmm. sign, you hear the da 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 It's like, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, also, I, I, like I could go on for hours about like all of the soundtrack choices that they made in this oh, film. Oh, Dude, you know the what? score in this movie, the score I was, score was I, like a lot like, of people I mean, want to say Jack Black was the star of this film. The score, I. Well, I am, was I am actively so waiting good. and checking for, for it to appear on Spotify because I Let's, need that mm -hmm. score. I, the reason why the score is so I strong. Need it yesterday. It's I need so it good. the day I saw it. Like one of the things, like another illumination trope is that that, that it, it, it it kind of took me it didn't completely take me out of the film, but it, like it was the one thing that was distracting. When they would put like they would shoehorn in pop songs where they don't need to. It's like, yeah. why are we hearing I Need a Hero? Why yeah. are we hearing Take On Me? Why are we hearing ACDC? No, we don't need that. We just need to hear this Mario score because all the mm. callbacks to the other video games, it was so beautifully done how they inter how they interweave that into the story and big moments. Like, I wish mm. the whole movie was like that. You don't need pop I songs. I would have rather that they would have done like the the Donkey Kong. I forget what it what the level's called, but the Donkey Kong stage and, and Mario Kart. I, I would have much rather that they would have Jungle had Japes or whatever oh, uh, to take on me. Oh, oh, uh, oh, God! They're they're so they're like da 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 that that whatever. Oh but, yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, D yeah. DK DK um. God dang it! Yeah, that's Jungle Japes. Oh, it's just Jungle Japes. Yeah, Jungle Japes. Da 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 da. Real quick, since right? we're real quick, since we're talking about the score and like music choices, Luigi's ringtone being the GameCube. The uh, GameCube, yep, yes. I got that, <laughs> that, that I got was that one instantly. moment where I like looked at the kid that was next to me, and they're just like, "Huh?" And I was just like, oh, "Okay, whatever. You don't get it. Like, it's <laughs> you okay, just don't like, get they're, it. They're too young. They're young. They're young. They don't get it. They don't get it. They're gypsies. So but it's fine. Look here, fetus. You wouldn't understand." Which I guess, uh, while we're on the topic of, uh, I know that we covered Punch Out a little bit earlier, but is this the part where we start talking about Smash Bros. speculations? No, no, because no, there's yet, one yet. more and character we have not talked about. Bowser. Jack Black as yes. Bowser. Yes. Yeah. At Man. the end of the day, at the end of the day, he he's he's the standout. I here. I wasn't sure whether to root against him or feel bad for him throughout the film. <laughs> Like, I was rooting against him because I mean my man's can't take I mean, no for an answer. Rooting against him, but it's like I also just feel bad for him. Yeah, I do feel that. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, oh. like 
in yeah. the video games, like all I saw Bowser as is just this big old monster that wants to destroy everything. He barely did he even talk in the games? I don't know if I he, he did well, in well, Sunshine. If you count the one controversy with Mario Kart 8, then maybe, but <laughs> Ooh. Wait, what? Wait, what are you talking about? Uh, during like the trailer, they you know they had a voice clip where people thought he was saying the N word. <laughs> Whoa! I don't, I don't know about this. Dude, this there, is... There's always going to be something was, like that for it, like it was... any single like Nintendo property that. Comes yeah, out. It, it was just funny. It was just the way that Every it came out. And they were like, oh, "Wait a minute!" <laughs> hey, yo, hold yeah, up. Hey. Yeah, Jack Black playing uh, Bowser. Like that was probably one of the one of the only like castings that I heard where I was like. That's perfect. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. The second mm -hmm. I heard Knocked that, I was like, oh, you park. nailed it. And he totally did. And he gave Bowser more dimension. As I said, yeah. like he gave him more character. There were a couple moments where I did slightly feel bad for him, mm -hmm. but not really. But like mm -hmm. to see that he, you know, he has motivation, he has emotions, he's not just a angry monster all the time. Yeah. And he, mm -hmm. and, you know, he's actually had some of the funniest moments in the movie. Of course, we gotta talk about it. People are waiting for us to talk about it. Peaches, peaches, peaches. Um, peaches yeah, yeah. Peaches, well, well, okay. Peaches, so, peaches, so, peaches, so that song. <laughs> great that song's great but at the same time i love that like when he gets interrupted and like they brought out a little bit of like the jack black hit here in the scene because yeah. he gets interrupted for, uh, in his song by a comic and he's like come jam with me real quick and he's just sitting there yeah. playing like, yeah. like da -da 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 -da, and then comic sitting there like like obviously he doesn't know how to play piano and he's sitting there doing that ding ding yeah that's jack black is there but like man when he the first time i watched this movie when he started playing the piano it's sinking mm -hmm. i almost died i almost the, died I, the, I, the, I, best, I, the best villain the best movie villains are always playing the piano yes i i, I intentionally like I, I saw, saw this movie like maybe two weeks after it came out, and I intentionally avoided listening to that song until I saw the movie, <laughs> just so <laughs> that could be what, like what it first exactly. when I first hear it. Exactly, I didn't even know there was a song. Like, so I was completely surprised. So when that came up, I was like, "Oh mm -hmm. no, he's not mm -hmm. about to!" Oh my freaking god! Mm -hmm. Peach, mm -hmm. understand? There was a Lord there was a report Ryan. going around saying that uh that song is eligible for the Oscars. Yes. Well, yes. it actually yes. is on the Billboard Hot 100 right now. Do it! Mm -hmm. <laughs> it better get recognition that, at the Oscars. That just never fails to make. Oh yeah, I, I remember. I remember there was a. Uh, there, there was like a little bit of like a buzz about it because shortly before the film came out, it came uh, it came out on Twitter like the same day that they announced that Donkey Kong was going to have the DK sixty four music. They uh, they were like, oh yeah, Bowser's was going to have like a little musical member, and everyone was like, huh? Like what? Why is he? Why is he having? A, why is it? A... You know what? Uh, now that you mention DK, uh, the DK rap makes an appearance in this film. Well, yes. let's talk about the fucked up. It was awesome. I loved it. I but loved it. Talk about the fucked up thing with the rap though. There was where they didn't credit. They didn't Grant credit Kirkhope. the composer. Yes. There, yeah, that but... was there was one controversial thing about that is yes. that they didn't include the original composer. Yes. Name they didn't Grant credit Kirkhope. him for that song in the credits. Yes, in the Grant credits Kirkhope. it says DK rap D Donkey Kong From 64. Dick it's like, yes. What? No, no, no. A person made yeah. that. <laughs> an actual person made that and he apparently from what i hear he had a really bad rap career mm -hmm. and he, he came out uh on like social media and was like why didn't they credit me what's up with no, that he, he didn't have a rap career yeah, he was that, like Grant Kirk he the composer. that was a fucking waste mm -hmm. like damn that's mm -hmm. cold i I, yeah. I will say that when that when i heard i mean they, they they put in the parts of the rap that they needed to but i was kind of waiting mm -hmm. for that to be the, like the introduction of the whole of the whole dk crew you do see the rest of the dk crew in the movie you do see them yeah, you but, see diddy oh you know you don't see all of them we, we're missing we're missing funky well, you see, uh, yeah i think you just yeah uh, the one you're missing i think is lanky and funky, funky and lanky yep yep those are the two that you're missing but you, uh, you and, got uh, chunky, you tiny got... i think there's I a bunch of no, yeah, no, 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 she's, she's, not, she's, not, she's, not, she's not. Yeah, because I remember seeing Diddy in there. Yeah, I Diddy, saw Diddy, Dixie, we saw uh, Chunky. Yeah, Dix Dixie Kong's also there. But, Dixie yeah, Kong was there, um, but she she wasn't like in Donkey Kong sixty four though. That was no, no. That was a deal. But uh, like yeah. I, I was, I was half expecting that to be like the whole like uh, you know. Uh, just like that finally, bet like I, I expected <laughs> to play like the whole thing. 
I'm glad that's, that, like, that's I, just going to be the start of the Donkey Kong Country trailer for whenever they. I, make I, that movie. I know, but like you know oh, what? Yeah. Save save it for the Donkey Kong movie. Save it for the Donkey yeah, Kong movie. Yeah. Put the whole, exactly. the whole thing in there. Exactly, and there's going to be so many light motifs surrounding the DK rap, and it's going to be beautiful, mm-hmm. and it's going to mm-hmm. make me laugh. <laughs> mm-hmm. the, whole, the whole credit song is just like I like. I'd be fine if for, like for the Donkey Kong movie if if they ever make one if the last part of the movie is like them having like some sort of dance sequence to Donkey to the DK rap. That's with fine. a whole bunch would... with a horde of bananas in the background yes. and yes. disco lights going anywhere. Yeah, you get like King K. Rule come coming out to like yeah, you get like King K. Rule coming out to like an orchestral version of like Gangplank Galleon or something like that. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Like... <laughs> yeah. Okay, so before we oh, get into great. um speculation of the future of the Nintendo universe, um, there's some main the main Easter eggs or main scenes that I'm sure people want to hear us talk about. Um, first, we start off with um, Mario getting the the cat suit and the um, whatever that what the flying bear. The tanuki, Tanuki, mm-hmm. the Tanuki mm-hmm. outfit. The outfit. No, yeah. actually, you know, it's a squirrel. Yeah. Actually, the flying. Wait, let's uh, uh, take your mind. Hold on, you're right. Oh. He has the flying squirrel one too. I think he's a cat suit. Yep, and it, it was it was really funny that when you got the Tanuki suit, you heard that. <laughs> 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 the moment you, the moment he got that power up, you could hear the theme to Super Mario Three in the background. Yes, yep, yes, and, it was like so immediately, good. like well, frame well, speak, one. Speaking of power, yeah, speaking of power up themes, can we talk about the star theme at the end there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before... Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, I know that I'm saving that for last. Right, saving that right, for last. Right, right, <laughs> but um but yeah, I yeah, I like the I like to when he got the cat suit and the tanuki suit. I love that mm-hmm. sequence where he was um he he was getting chased by um what was it big that big bill is that oh the called? the bomber bonsai bill, bill. Or whatever? The bon- bonsai bill yes bonsai i i bill, love yeah. that entire sequence i loved it and then he had him go into that uh that pipe and then mm-hmm. it cr- crossed a huge explosion into the the different mm-hmm. realms or whatever Merge that was the dimensions he the caused dimension. an incursion, <laughs> caused yeah, an incursion. Canonically... mario caused an incursion <laughs> yeah canonically <laughs> the mushroom yeah canonically the mushroom kingdom has uh absorbed brooklyn <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll that is that how it shit. became New Donk City. Yes, <laughs> that would make sense, actually. That actually makes sense. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I, I will. You know what? No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not disappointed about that. I was like, yeah. Like now, I'm thinking about it. Why didn't they have like Pauline singing like the the Mario Odyssey? Thing? Jump yeah, up, yeah, super you know, Y'all want too much. Y'all want too much. Y'all want too much. I know. I know. I know. I, know. I, 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 I was. Bad. I was very. Uh, I was also really happy that we got Donkey Kong with the Fire Fowler, uh power up. Yeah, that was a great that design. Was cool. That was yeah. so cool. That was, that was so awesome. cool. And keep in mind, Peach and Donkey Kong were the only one that got Fire Flower abilities, but Mario did not. Yeah. Yeah. The next movie. Wow, the, yeah. next movie yeah. the next That's movie. <laughs> Save for the next movie. That, the reason why that pisses me off is because in Smash Ultimate, they got rid of Mario's uh, fire outfit. Mm-hmm. That they he did? originally had from knows. Brawl and Smash Four, mm-hmm. they got rid of it in Ultimate. So that's mm-hmm. like in they, this they movie, also, it's kind of like uh, a nod that they didn't have that. Yeah, it's they like, also God damn it. Yeah, they that's also movie. didn't. Which I mean, I get it. It's more of a Jumpman thing. Uh, during the whole Donkey Kong fight, they didn't give him a hammer or anything when he, when he was like tossing down barrels or something. Right? Yeah, but they expect him yeah. to go full on. Yeah, yeah, because they they had the music going yeah. and everything too. They did the do 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 do. Oh, they also. Really... They also had the uh, the mini mushroom, a couple yes, times. Yes, they had the mini yes. mushroom, which is yeah. Which they, they, I they, wish they, that they you, I wish that they utilized that a little bit better as opposed mm-hmm. to like I understand the the joke about like oh you just turned smaller, lol. Mm-hmm. But like I, I wish that they used it like a little bit better. Like they they showed Mario like jump higher from it, yeah, or something. There, that was that was cool, that's, what, that's what happens when you have the yeah. mini mushroom. You jump higher. Yeah, that like, was yeah. cool though. Which uh, I mean, yeah, they they did make the joke that like Mario doesn't like mushrooms. But I like I like that um, they uh, actually kept the mushroom power up doing what the mushroom power up does. Like oh, oh you know you're small. Mm-hmm. Here take this mushroom and then he just actually gets bigger and it's like okay okay yeah that's he cool. actually yeah. grows. Yeah because I, I was half expecting them to like not even really do the power ups besides the fire flower. So yeah the fact that they I... actually like still had the mushroom and let it do what it did and then they also kept the whole rule of oh when you get hit you lose it which is like yeah that, yeah. I... 
Which I like that there were consequences to the mushroom. Yeah, there was a very, yeah, very I loved good detail. that. And I, I loved that for the whole obstacle course section, you had references to just about everything in like classic Mario platforming the piranha plants, the, you know, you had the, uh, the falling platforms, you had the flag, you had all of that. Yeah, I lo loved all of that. Um, and I, lo I love how they didn't like over centralize on it either. It was just the yes. one sequence of, yes. you know, Peach goes through the whole course and then Mario tries to go through the whole course. It was just that one course that you see every mm -hmm. single time. And then any other like nods to like the yeah. the platforming aspect of it was shown in actual battle sequences or like, yeah. actual, like yeah. action, like moving sequences, like in the yeah. beginning of the movie with Mario and new york and then mario and donkey kong fighting off against bowser's minions they just yeah. utilized that so freaking well it, it was so well utilized like even during the obstacle course segment they gave mario the triple jump which is like oh, okay i see what you did yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. and god i uh, want to talk about the final battle so much oh, I, I was, oh, oh, oh we're almost I know, there i'm, I'm, I'm almost holding there. my damn tongue dude mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um one other thing one little thing before we talk about the one more uh, thing. mario kart um but I like that they didn't rush the romance with Mario and Peach. Like you could tell that they're mm -hmm. they're planting seeds, they're they're mm -hmm. building up a little mm -hmm. bit, but they mm -hmm. weren't like instantly in love. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I like that they were slow with that. So in the next film, yeah. I'm expecting them to be a little more lovey dovey. You know? yeah. yeah, they like most of most of their romance was just in Bowser's head. Cause he was just overly jealous throughout the film. Yeah, like does she think she's cute? Does she think yeah. he's cute? And is like, she oh, impressed wait. by him? <laughs> Do princesses Mario? find him no, attractive? Find him attractive. <laughs> they do if they have the taste. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that was good. That was, that was, the was a best good bit. Line that was, the that was so good. That was <laughs> so so good. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I like the relationship that they had with uh with. Uh, I do find it funny that Bowser tore Luigi's uh, mustache and um, it didn't yep. stick. Yep. Yeah, that's what, one of the things I liked about Bowser. Not only that, you know, he's much more charismatic and like he has, you know, he's had some of the funniest moments and he had a musical number, but they kept the threat of Bowser. He is still a scary, imposing figure. Mm -hmm. And like, especially during that climactic battle in uh, in Boston, when he was just wrecking, wreaking havoc, I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, yeah, like this. Yeah. Scary. Was, there was also there was also the whole <laughs> yeah. thing where um where like you know they're they're trying to like do the the wedding with like Bowser and Peach, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm sacrificing these these prisoners in your honor." <laughs> Like, yeah, like this movie's not afraid to talk about death. Yeah, no, like, like, like he straight up says, he straight up says, we'll see how tough Mario is when I kill his brother in front of him. And I was like, Whoa. like, God damn. <laughs> hey, we're done with violence. Bowser actually <laughs> spitting fire. Right. Yeah. What is yeah, Bowser like, cooking today? Right, right. Yeah. I was, I was almost surprised that they didn't like try to put like the one up mushroom in there, like, oh, someone dies. And they're just like, oh, give him this. Well, I'm probably going to. Actually, yeah. I'm glad that they didn't do I'm, that. I'm glad they didn't, I, yes. Because yeah, yeah. they could utilize that as like a later thing where like one of the Mario Bros gets fucked up, one up Mushroom, and they're back mm -hmm. alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I it, hope they don't do that in future movies. Mm -hmm. that, that, was, it was funny, it. Though, so badly. <laughs> that was funny, though, that they kind of like had uh, Death be kind of inconsequential for the Koopas, though, where he's like, he's like, well, he gets what, turned what if into she a says no? And then he just gets burned. <laughs> Yeah, they get burned into dry bones. Like that's, uh, so that's yeah, good. I'm like, holy shit! Yeah. <laughs> that is. They kept, they kept the dry bone sound effects in there too. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe sample yeah. and everything. Okay, I guess I was the sound of this film real fast. Um, one of the things I noticed with this film is that unlike the Sonic movie, which I still adored, the Sonic movie is so afraid to use any sound Sonic song that's not Green Hill, and they're so afraid to like use yeah. the sound like any sound yeah. effects of the ring sound effect. And I'm like, the Mario movie is the soundtrack embracing the heritage of the video games. For, and that, oh, that's not the whole thing, but for the most part, was like, this. it had this element of just, it's a video game movie, we're not afraid that to use the elements of the video game. Like I mentioned at the beginning, it doesn't compromise on being a video game adaptation. And that's a big part of it, is that it uses the music for the games correctly. It uses, it enhances them a little bit, they like, spruce up the score give it a fresh coat of paint that the film needs mm -hmm. and yeah just the fact that like the dry bones have their proper sounds yeah, was really sound endearing design. well the, sh the shy guys having the wah yeah like, yeah 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 
I, I also love how ominous and creepy that they made the shy guys in that one shot where oh, he's yeah. that, that actually, that actually in the dark forest and then he thinks that he's okay and then he's like in like, you feel like a weird presence like in that dark background is like something's gonna come up right it, like, it it a horde of shy guys that actually creeped, right that behind actually him it was so, yeah. Yeah, it was so beautiful i mean i mean so what did, yeah i mean what'd you expect man they they, they put mario in world one one they threw luigi in world eight just straight yeah. away yeah that's yeah, really they, what they happened put in, they put him in they put luigi in lost levels yep yep, yep. Mm-hmm. sure yep. did sure did all right let's talk about mario kart What'd you think about that sequence? I I loved everything that they did with Mario Kart there. He, he, like it, it was it was it was a little like kind of like cheesy, but like you know once again it's a kids film. It kind of it kind of needed to be. It I has loved, the right to be cheesy. Yeah, and I I loved that Rainbow Road is just a like shortcut that they take and that they kept the music for rainbow road in there too which is yep like, and it's also yeah. the 64 design rainbow road mostly yes yes it's the they most also iconic. actually utilize like rainbow road shortcuts as like a nod to like people taking shortcuts on like yeah. various different well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rainbow road. the fact that the blue shell was a character was so funny because i saw the posters I was like this never oh, seen yeah. a blue shell yeah. cooper mm-hmm. like, i never saw blue shell koopa before and then um they had him in the fucking poster, and I realized I was actually a character, and he's like, You're not through with me yet! Yeah, and he blue yelled shell. blue shell, I was like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew it was coming when I saw like, it. Circling I was like, around oh, and then just like, nuke. <laughs> yep. And well, they actually they, had what, the blue yeah. shell sound effect. Yep, like, you yep, would they, hear um, they, they, they like, showed, spin around they, and all showed, that. Yeah. yeah, they showed, like, all the core power-ups from, like, Mario Kart in there, too. Like, the banana was showing a bunch of times. They did the bullet bills. They did... I also love how they shell. utilized uh, yeah. the, like, yeah, the red and green shells. How, like, you mm-hmm. jumped on the Koopa, and then it just turns into the green shell. And mm-hmm. <laughs> free mm-hmm. yep. I love the green shell real quick i love that during the wedding sequence they have king bob bomb like sit down next to a, a koopa Don't, and it feels so bad for king bob. <laughs> yeah. it feels so mm-hmm. bad for oh yeah they blow him up yeah yeah they <laughs> killed him they, 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 they gave him the him. noise too fire arrow on his yep. like fuse or whatever him. is like oh poor the guy, only dude. enemy that i'm kind of disappointed that we didn't see was a thwomp we didn't see one thwomp in that film yep. but you know, <gasps> whatever Mm, yeah. Yeah. yeah we yeah. did see uh we did see the eel though from mario 64 yes <laughs> child heavy <laughs> children yet again yeah um how did you guys feel about uh the 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 kong's kingdom that it was all cart based did you did you feel like that was okay did it feel shoehorned in or no i felt fine because they, yeah, they build yeah. devices in there uh, in, in in their like game anyways mm-hmm. i mean considering that they're mar- that they're like mentioned as like the crazy people of like that whole world it's like oh, okay yeah, of course they'd be using the crazy like nonsensical travel of mario kart for like their main source of travel because it's crazy it's wacky why would you intentionally drive on an incomplete road why would you like have like no traffic yeah. lights or anything yeah mario yeah. kart okay yeah that I, makes gu- I guess uh, another thing to talk about with that is that i think the whole like don- the kong area being like associated with like the cards and whatnot that's that could be sort of like a nod to diddy kong racing yes as opposed to just yes. mario kart it didn't really start to be like mario kart until mario actually got his own card yeah they even, they even gave diddy the bongos there for a second but yeah they did yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. very nice okay let's get to the moment that you guys have been waiting to talk about mm-hmm. let's, let, let's talk about mario and luigi getting that damn star going yep. invisible the second, Dude, the, the day. The I second to that song started seat, the so second excited. that song started i had to put a hand in because i was waiting for the music to start and the second that it started i had to put a hand over my mouth because i my first reaction was to like scream in excitement and i was like may i tell you guys a dark thing about that scene possibly hmm. so um this is takes with a grain of salt because it's a youtube comment but apparently one of the staffers uh, commented on the uh trailer one of the one a piece of mario uh, content pertaining to the film and was like um by the way are you aware that uh we had to fight to have that because they originally were going to play jump by van halen 
Oh my god. I that would have that would have that would have ruined, ruined that would have ruined that entire, that entire scene. sequence. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yep. exactly. Like illumination. I know. It didn't happen. Like, I, I love I love that they played like an orchestrated version of that music. I love that like it went like essentially full anime protagonist at that point. Like mm -hmm. Bowser yeah. does the whole like they they did like a beast gohan thing there where like he goes and like punches uh Mario and Luigi and they're just like, yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> he, he shoots fire at them, and they're just like, mm -hmm. just struck, mm -hmm. striking they did that. Them. Yeah, yeah. And they did they like beat. their two like brother like uppercut thing, and then like a whole like dive down like you have the feet that will pierce the heavens kind of like kick. <laughs> just <laughs> and they they also beat Bowser the exact same way that you beat him in Mario sixty four. I was like the Bro, entire time I, I, I was, was like I was they're gonna there. they're gonna so long gay Bowser I, this dude. I, I know I was, I, was so gonna, I was sitting there reading. I, I went dead do quiet. it right now and they me, did me, it and I yeah. I wanted to scream bro. Yeah, me and like four of the other people in my row were sitting there like silent, like waiting for them to say, like, are they gonna say so long, gay Bowser? Are they gonna say yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, are they gonna do it? Are they yeah. gonna do it? <laughs> I was half expecting Chris Pratt to be like, so long, gay Bowser. But... <laughs> it's only the long King Bowser, apparently, but yeah. the delivery is you know, so long gay Bowser. <laughs> we know, yeah. we know it as so long gay Bowser. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's how, how it, it should be. It's Sorry, we can't tricky. say that. We can't say that in the kids' movie. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, you can. It's yeah. Mario confirmed for homophobe. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, what yeah. I also loved about it, you know, yeah, that whole sequence was, that was awesome. But what I what I love right before that moment happens, there's a very good moment between Mario and Luigi when when Bowser was about to shoot fire at at Mario. And then Luigi takes the the whatever the the, yes. the lid to the sword. yeah yeah the, 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 the manhole cover yeah them. yeah it's the payoff it's the payoff to the baby uh, flashback yeah yes mm -hmm. it's like I love the brother relationship between Mario and Luigi because like we know for a lot of people know that you know for mainly it, it would be the Mario show for a lot of the games and like Luigi would be in the background and one of the things I was worried about was that. Luigi wouldn't feel important in this movie, but that was not the case at all. Mm -hmm. Like he was, he was still very important to the plot. You know, he still had a great relationship with Mario. You know, and I loved when they did take the star. It was both of them. It mm -hmm. wasn't just Mario. It was mm -hmm. both of mm -hmm. them. They mm -hmm. both kicked ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I love, also... and I love how they utilize that as well because when you use the superstar in the Mario games, at least in the later titles, from what I remember. When you pick up one of your um, one of your teammates, uh, that person also gets the superstar ability. Right, right, and and kind of speaking on like their like brotherly relationship that they showed in this film, I teared up when they when they reunited in the film. Like yes. <laughs> like uh, like yes. you know, yeah, yeah, when Mario saved from... Luigi yep, from. Yep, and they... Yeah, but they did falling. like their whole like like he like like Mario just did not want to let go of Luigi. It's like oh, it's like, like it was so believable. Like I and told they, you, we'd be yeah. back together. I was yep. like, stay together. Yeah, like yep, long as we're together, yep. nothing will happen. Yes. I'm like, yes, yeah, yeah it was that. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, stop. <laughs> And this they don't have enough emotion in this movie. Know, you shut up. This mo this movie made <laughs> There's emotion things. written all over this freaking movie. <laughs> this movie made me feel things. <laughs> I have feelings. <laughs> it needs to win awards. <laughs> It, it, oh, yes, like it, it has is. to win something. It, mm -hmm. If it's not it, anything, it please be at least nominated for best animated feature. Yeah, no, I, 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 I doubt, doubt it. Will. I, I, I need doubt it. Will. I need it to be. I need it to be nominated. I want it to happen, but I, I, I doubt sure it will. about that. I, I need it. I need it to be nominated, but I feel like it's going to lose to Last Wish. But that's fine. That's fine. It's that's probably fine. going to. Yeah. Lose to fine. Last Wish. I thought that. Oh, was it not last nominated? Wish. No, it deserves. No, Last Wish deserves does does deserve it more. Last Wish deserves it way more. Last Wish actually was... Was it no, not I, nominated at the most wait, recent... Wait, 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 it was already know. nominated. It was... No, no, it was already nominated. Was it? Oh, okay, it, never mind. I never was mind. gonna say, like, that was yeah. a December release. Never never mind. Well, then then again, the year just started. There are a bunch of other animated films coming out. Oh, you know what? Year. God damn it, we got Spider-Verse. We got yep. Spider-Verse, oh, we got God, Elemental. Damn it. We got Elemental. Elemental. Yep. Nomination. Elemental's nomination. gonna be mid. Nomination. Yeah, nomination. It, le it needs to at least get nominated. Yeah. You don't know, B. Ah, you like, we didn't see the movie it. yet. It could be great. <laughs> it could be great. Mm, Wait, which one? Spider-Verse? Elementals. Uh, Elementals. Oh, Elementals? Yeah. I think Elementals is going to... Pixar is really good at making people feel things. <laughs> yes. And that's... However, uh, uh, I feel emotioned out. I've, I've been through enough. 
I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, look, like, like the the thing, the question that's asked, and it's a meme, it's a meme, but it's true. The question that's asked before every Pixar film is, "What if blank had emotions?" And then it makes you feel things. So yes, yeah, yeah. but no, th- this movie, this movie was amazing, and like that last whole fight sequence is amazing. I like, I like how how it ended. I was like, like, cause like when they were doing the whole final fight on like um. When they were starting to do the fight on like Bowser's fortress, I was like, "Are they gonna like drop him in the lava and do like the whole skeleton Bowser thing?" Like, oh, I hope like the whole dry. Bowser. No, no, yeah, it's too early for the, again. Yeah. Too early for dry Bowser. I know. Too I know. Early I, was like, I, was like, I was like, I was like, I hope they don't do dry Bowser. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. Was, so then, what you know, dry Bowser? Yeah, but then I was sitting there like, "Well, are they gonna do like Giga Bowser? Are they gonna do?" <laughs> but. No. Again, too early yeah. for that too. But like, too early. I'm telling you, there's so many things in this film that like they could have done it, but like if mm-hmm. they did it, it's too early mm-hmm. to do it. I mean, I mean, to, make a to kind of, of it. I mean, so on that note, to kind of come back to like the thing you proposed earlier, uh, beef. I do think that Nintendo is going to use this movie as a base, like going forward for like future films. That's that's what I thought too. I feel yeah, like, like this like one is was... probably going to be a good base, and I feel like at this point they're going to mm-hmm. keep improving on the story because mm-hmm. I feel like and... they're not going to have Illumination like as long for like just the story elements. I think they're only yeah. going to have Illumination solely for the animation. Yes, yes, exactly, and I, I feel like they're, that's going to be their main studio that they use because like there was there was like implications of like other dimensions and other IPs existing and everything because like you know. There's been like a recent call for like, you know, not only a Mario 2, but there's been a recent call for like, you know, a Legend of Zelda movie and a Metroid movie. And it's like, I feel like they could use like, like if they're going to connect they all these films. They will never make a Metroid film. It's a bit, I, I feel like they got it. I feel like they got it. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. How, we'll get how there, popular please, Metroid please, has been we'll recently. We'll get there. <laughs> with how popular Metroid has been Which recently. brings us into our conversation of the future of the Nintendo mm-hmm. universe. What do we think they're going to do? What do we want them to do? Mm-hmm. What are they never going to touch? What is the best? Yeah, what's yes, the Kirby. Best point of, Kirby. What's the best point of strategy for this Nintendo universe? My partner is screaming for Kirby. Mm-hmm. Do. Mm-hmm. All right. So Genuinely, are... I think the next film needs to be Kirby. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, if, <laughs> actually, if actually just... I think the next, I think the next project because I keep hearing it, I keep hearing rumblings. Legend of Zelda. I think that's well, yeah. I mean, okay. that's, that's probably that's probably, think... that's probably going to be the next one because I think I think they they are legitimately planning to do something with that. They originally right. had something going on at Netflix. And Netflix. Then I think and got, I think so. I mean, what happened was it got that. leaked. Mm-hmm. They, they, someone leaked was leaking information, and Nintendo went, "No, you mm-hmm. guys." So, so the question the then is, would they do like will, will they start at like the beginning with like OG Legend of Zelda? Or would yes. they sit there? Or would they sit there mm. try to do things chronologically, starting with with Skyward Sword? Or would yeah, they just I, jump right to Breath of the Wild? Or off in a time. Yeah, that's something interesting to go into. I think they because, would have you know, to Breath of the Wild is the one that's Sword. in the mainstream media right now. Well, no, I think they would do Skyward Sword as like a prequel. I f- well, yeah, that's that's my guess. I think they're going to yeah, do so Skyward they, Sword as a prequel. I feel like they would start with Ocarina of Time and then yes. go back to to Skyward. Yes. Like they'd probably do Ocarina of Time, Majora's yeah, Ocarina Mask. Ocarina of Time, it'd be Zelda One and Zelda Two, or Ocarina of Time and then Majora's Mask. Well, because well, the, only reason, the had, only reason I don't think they would start Ocarina with Zelda One and Zelda Two is because in, in the timeline that Nintendo themselves have come up with, it's the last, those games yeah. take after Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but if they if they're gonna keep going with like Nintendo movies and make a Smash Brothers movie, which I feel like eventually they have to. Not that, right now. Like, I, I know, I know, but no, I feel when like they, when they got but, all the movies, but I, but I feel like maybe like give it like twenty twenty eight or twenty twenty nine. Yes, but I feel like that means that I'm finally that me and like this fan base are gonna finally get validated and they're gonna make an F Zero movie. If, no. they, if they go in that F-Zero? direction, F Zero, F Zero, that, that, that is like they got it. At least, say, at least say something. What's going to happen is for them to do something like that. If that they do a Smash Bros. film, wishful what they're going to do is they're going to have. That's very wishful thinking, but they have done stuff with F Zero before. They had a whole anime. I know. They anime. had a whole anime. For well, Miyamoto and the band did F Zero. Yeah, the movie I would I see. Okay, the movie, okay, the movie I would want to see most is like okay. Now again, if we're going to bring up F Zero, here's what I think realistically happened with F Zero is that it would be brought for the Smash. If there is a Smash Bros. movie. It and Earthbound, the two most obscure franchises, would be like introduced in that film. I feel it like would, they would have just... to give Earthbound a movie, though. No, no. He- here's the thing. I, no, I think Earthbound. Act- I, I made it. It's funny that we're talking about this now because on Twitch, I made a tier list 
going over like the franchises on who I think is most likely going to get a film at this point in time. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about Earthbound and I thought to myself, you know, it, it's kind of hard to it, it'd be difficult to do that as a movie. Like, I, but I would understand no. it if they did. No, hang on, hang on, hang on. I would understand it if they did, but only as a like, I think they would only be in here for the Smash Bros. movies. Well, yeah, I mean, that's it was, true, but at I, the same time, I feel like they could do a movie. They would just have to either boost the rating a little bit or completely ixnay the Giga stuff. Right, but no, the, I think again, you leave you, it you in there. Have, you can't have Ness and Lucas in the same film because they're from two different, yeah, different timelines yes. well, of That's the, the, the point of Smash Bros. is that it's like Smash Bros. would be like an Avengers. And, and you know, the whole purpose of Smash Bros. is that they're all toys. Yes. Like, that's what the original and, Smash Bros. started off with. Well, and if they're going to do a film... Oh, oh, I'm sorry, didn't mean to cut you. I was just saying. Here, <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing, though. Like with this Nintendo universe that I think has an advantage over other cinematic universes, it's because with these different Nintendo properties and how all these characters come into the Smash Brothers game, you can you formulate a plan. You can do yeah. whatever you want, yes. timeline wise. Yes, you or can. But, wise. You can. You know what you movie can. I want to see the most out of everything? A Star Fox film. That That's what I was going to say. That's I, I would be interested be in I feel like film. I feel like I feel like you're first going to get like Legend of Zelda, then like Kirby, and then probably like maybe Star Fox, maybe Star Fox next. I, I, okay, as much honestly, as I would love, I, I, if we want to talk about projects that we want to see as a movie, as much as I have Kirby on my shirt and as my backdrop, I want I I'm dying for a Kirby movie, but. First, I want a Metroid film. Yes, that was gonna. I want a I was Metroid say, film I, first, I was, and and Blake Lively for Samus. Yeah. So I was I was gonna say yes. Gwendolyn yeah, Christie. No, 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 get, get out of that with Gwen, Gwendolyn Christie. No, 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 Blake no, 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 Lively no, no, for I, Samus. No, I agree with you. Ruby. No, I agree with you. Ruby. I agree with you completely. And like, I, I'm fiending for a Metroid movie right mm -hmm. now. But well, like, I think okay, it's how they like, do Ridley. But like, but like, so the question okay, is, so the question on, is do you, if you can't adapt Earth, but you can't adapt Metroid. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, guys. Before, Yo, what's up, we, what's up? before we get into a spiral, before we get to a spiral, here's <laughs> what I think realistically, realistically, here are the properties that you need before you even think about it doing a Super Smash Brothers. They need... Good, Icarus. <laughs> that's optional on it as, 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 as to say that's, other, that's, that's, other, like okay this is you know this is just my speculation you don't have to go with it but i feel like this is the most realistic lineup that they have to have other characters that you guys want you have to wait for them to do a sequel to mm -hmm. but here are the here are the main ones that they need and that they can get right now at this period of time is mario zelda metroid Kirby, Star Fox. Metroid is not up there. You gotta understand. Metroid literally was no. the lowest selling franchise the no, longest time. Well, no, no, it's it's it's, it's been heavy. It's no. back. No, it's back it's now. Lowest, yeah. lowest selling franchise does not mean that every game that they, that they came out with was bad. Right. Also, no, it's not about the quality they have a of the games. Number of well, yeah, no, no, no. You're talking about purely like, like how much it's sold, but well, also... yeah, okay, it's not about the quality of the games. It's literally that Miyamoto has openly said. I do not know what to do with Metroid. Why do you think Dread was not, wasn't done in house at Nintendo? That was done by Mercury Stream, right? With right. Nintendo's oversight. Time, and it turned out amazing, man. It turned out amazing, but like we have to acknowledge that Nintendo, as a company, does not know what to do with Metroid directly. This, this, this is okay. True. Well, yes. well, let them have let Universal right. and Illumination think of right, something to right, do with there right. if they can't mm -hmm, do it, right. because regardless of the qu whatever quality or cell numbers. Samus, correct me if I'm wrong. Samus is an integral character to the Smash Bros. universe, is she yes. not? Yes. No, they it, have the original eight characters. What yeah, you I mean, do she... is you have to do the original roster of Smash Bros. That's the yes, only thing Samus I can see is working. Them, which Samus Again. is one of them. Yeah, Captain what Falcon could, is, and so is Samus. Ness. Samus, yep. you could actually do as like you, in one movie. You could do you, one. Right, right, you could do right. one Metroid movie, right? And, and then like, put I, her in Smash Bros. But how would you do the Metroid film without it turning into Alien and having a horror atmosphere? Because those well, things so are. That, you would have, have to make it. Like well, yeah, it has they to, have be to be make a it an Alien. It has, it's a sci-fi property. Because otherwise, if you wanted to do like. I guess that could be the origin of Metroid and Samus was that like Ridley killed. Samus's parents. Right, right. Yeah. So we so could go into still... more of like the backstory well, of Samus's I guess what, parents. I guess what and the then have is... Samus learn those things and mm -hmm. learn more and more about them throughout the film. Mm -hmm. 
what the advantage is of the Nintendo doing its own branding is that it actually is possible that unlike Marvel, Nintendo could have wildly varying tones between its films. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, but, and like and like they show they show yes, and they show they show it's the, not gonna be Illumination like, well, doing it, it would just be and, different studios. And they I show think. in moments of this film that like they're not afraid to do like some horror aspects. But like no, it's we, not but, like, it's, soft horror is not this it, it, somebody who's a horror like a fit the buff. Doing horror for children and doing spooky elements yes. are different yes. ballparks, though. Yes, yes, I know that those are different ballparks, but at the same time, um, and even if they didn't want to do horror, they could do like straight up sci-fi. That's fine, but but like like they kind of have to do something like horror related because yeah, you With know, Metroid, like Ridley, yeah, because because Ridley straight up like like just absolutely Ridley kills people. Yeah, yes, yeah, like mm-hmm. slaughtered Samus's parents. You know, the, like they, they, if you if you, if you also want to go into the varying different qualities of like the different Nintendo films, you could make Zelda PG thirteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Zelda I was, was going to say you could up it to PG thirteen. It's fine. And then with I'm Kirby, like, like rated G or something. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. actually, I don't. Depending how, because Kirby gets really weird. So I think they they'll probably do some psychedelic stuff with Kirby. Because yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Sorry. Okay, PG, PG maybe. Well, PG, okay, Kirby, like borderline G. My partner would argue, again, my partner who's obsessed with Kirby would be like, if they're going to do a Kirby film, they need to go into the Eldritch Abomination stuff. We need to get to the Nightmare stuff. We need to talk about Zero. We need to Kirby talk about Nightmare. R. <laughs> okay. well, yeah. Here's Kirby, my, uh... Kirby, Kirby EXE. Kirby EXE. Yeah, Kirby. <laughs> well, no, Kirby, but, uh... Kirby lore is like that already. Have you yeah. guys played Forgotten Land? We're already there. That monster at the end of that game is terrifying to look at. Yes. Yeah. Mark is so, terrifying so, to look at. So, the bad, one like, question yeah. that I kind of want to propose, want to pose, then, with the if they were to do a Metroid movie, would they do that? Would they need to do that animated or live action? Okay, live action. here's my here's my hot take for everybody. Gwendolyn Christie Here live action. Hot yeah. take. Here's the hot take. All of these properties have to be animated. I don't care what you. I don't care what your casting is. I don't care what you want to see in live action. If you want this universe to work the best. If you want these characters to cross over, all of these properties have to be animated. You yeah, have to. yeah. No, I do true. agree with that. However, I only say Blake Lively for Samus because of um, if we look at Subspace Emissary from uh, the the story mode from Brawl, mm-hmm. there was a moment in that storyline where Samus encounters uh, Pikachu. And they team up to try to escape this like, yeah. faci- this space facility yeah. or whatever. And we all remember a movie called Detective Pikachu, which stars Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu. Uh, you know who Ryan Reynolds is married there. to Blake Lively. Blake Lively. I see what you're getting. I see that. There. So if we had if, if if somehow we had those two paired up together somehow, yeah. so, as so those well, characters. Well, well, so I kind of feel like I'm they could saying. still do animated, but you just do like. Because you could, C- on it, you like, could CGI work. now, CGI now is like at such a point where you can do like that whole motion capture and facial capture thing. Yes, make yes. it animated. I, looks believable. You, you could, you could find a way to merge those together, and I think that that's kind right. of what the special thing about this. Well, right, right. Franchise. You don't have to do right. like a Roger Rabbit kind of deal. Be like, right. well, well, actually. I mean, like you could Bale potentially World? merge the Pokemon franchise, the Sonic franchise, and the Mario franchise, even though they're so- live action and animated. No one bring up Sonic with regards to these. Keep that away from here for right now. We'll Wait, deal look. with third part. You, well, there, actually, I'm just saying here's... you could somehow merge those together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. So there, there's one. There's a couple issues with that though. Um, okay. Before I get to that. Um, um, Big B, were you talking about like in a Beowulf Polar Express type of thing with them doing the animation? That's right. Like, so, like, yeah, exactly. uh, I'm trying to think of what a good Adventures comparison of, of that. Not Ten Ten. I was gonna say Adventures of Ten Ten, but that's not a like, good comparison. Uh, so, so I'm thinking more like along the lines of like, kind of looking at games rather than films. I'm kind of thinking of that more in like the sense of like Last of Us, where they have like you know this motion capture, and it's also kind of like yeah. replicating some of these character, these actors' faces, but it still looks it's animated. Like it's still you know it's clearly animated. So like, you know, it doesn't having... have to be like fully live action. You can have like their likeness, you know. And, um, in so the, it's like in, a Robert in... Zemeckis animated movie. <laughs> Hold up, what if they do a a Tron Legacy? <laughs> what, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Hold on, elaborate, elaborate, elaborate. Elaborate. So what I mean is they use 
Like, I'm not saying they do the Jeff Bridges thing where they just they make a digital actor of him, which that, that film was not bad about. What I mean is they have really surreal, hyper-animated environment CG, like, leaning hard to CGI for those, but real actors in that, like, space with, well, like, CGI also, characters. I think that could work. I, I need, So so the reason I, I don't really want to do that is, uh, yet is I, I'm going to wait and see... Because Transformers: Rise of the Beast is coming out, and that's something that's like you know live action mixed with like CGI and animation. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna see if that film showcases that we're there with that technology to see like whether or not I'd be on board for something like that. And of course, you know it's not any of our decisions on what they do, but like I, I I'm not sure that they're exactly there yet. Right. You and know, well, like, I'm gonna I'm gonna refer back to our conversation earlier about what we were talking about with Dial of Destiny. I don't know I don't know if we were talking about during the uh, the recording, recording. Of this podcast, but we saw footage from Dial of Destiny of like the de aging effects on Harrison Ford, mm -hmm. like, and we saw how realistic that looked. Which I know that what we're talking about is a completely different ballpark, but that is just like it. If we're talking about like steps, what they're doing in Dial of Destiny is like step one, and then step two is what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, th yeah. I think I think we're getting there, but that's why I would propose something similar to like Last of Us, where it's like you know just... you have you have their likenesses. It's still voiced by those actors that you want, mm -hmm. but it's it, it, you can clearly tell it's animated so that it meshes better with like these animated films because you know it'd be jarring to see a, a real like just human next to illuminations mario that's what i'm so, saying well, like i feel like all these properties have to be animated so you won't my have proposal, that jarring of a thing mm, my idea is that each nintendo film has a different like, has a different cgi or real life style depending on which one you want to go which way you go with this mm. but and i mean, I each mean one, could... on, hold on each one has a different style individually mm -hmm. but in a smash bros or crossover film they get unified as the games already do like mm -hmm. star fox looks nothing like anything else Mm -hmm. compared to Nintendo's again they used puppets for their mm -hmm. fucking promotional material mm -hmm. I mean, Nintendo I mean, already has the template just do each thing giving each thing its own breathing room and tone mm -hmm. that's I why mean, I'm like I wouldn't mind a live action Metroid but then you just do the Smash Bros movie and you just you take the designs that are clearly drawn from the Nintendo like like bin of character designs and you just impl implant them into that in a uniform style, like mm -hmm. Smash Bros. already does. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I mean, and you I could... don't think they need to all be animated. I think some of them should be for sure. Yeah, the like Kirby, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Or, okay, I both propose this question because, like, it it, it it sounds to me that you you don't have faith that Illumination can do all those properties properly. No. Uh, okay, that, which I kind of have that feeling too. I'm kind of dubious about them doing all yeah. the properties so what do you guys okay because i heard this like proposal going around since universal also owns dreamworks animation do you trust them to do certain properties with dreamworks because they could be a little bit more yes. adult in illumination so, so i could trust more creative with their I, animation style i could trust dreamworks to do a, a metroid film mm -hmm. that looks like kind of like more realistic if they were going to go with the animated route with metroid i could trust them to do that because yeah. they they've done realistic humans before and like they've sh they've gotten better oh my god they got the shrek they got shrek proportions of shrek design right like like it like like puss in boots is oh god like, like like they're they're at like a really good point with how they design human like realistic furry humans, creatures but yeah so I, I could trust them with like a metroid film or like you know the dream film and f-zero film i could trust them with that yeah <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I agree 100%. And I think uh, something else that I could add on to that is uh, with uh, comparing it to the uh, the Spider-Verse films, uh, kind of a different situation. But since that film is run by only one company, it's kind of the same idea of like you're ha you're bringing in multiple different art styles from like mm -hmm. various different qualities Mm -hmm. And so with the Smash Bros. universe, you can kind of get away with that as well, with having mm -hmm. different art design, a different design for the Mario series, different design for Metroid, different design for Kirby, and then Zelda, Star Fox, and then uh, Pokemon, if they ever want to read. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was going to say, like, you can, uh, I was going to say earlier, like, you you can 
you don't have to unify them all under one art style. You can su just suspend that disbelief if you. you I know. honestly I think, think you need to for the Smash Brothers movie for the right. individual films. You don't necessarily have. Well, it's, uh, yeah, as Smash Bros. Ultimate does, I'm like, I think that it'd be best to unify them, but take into account, because the thing is, the designs themselves are varied enough to where it's pretty clear, yeah, um, I know that that's a Mario, that's a that's a Luigi, that's a Yoshi, I just, the, the, mm -hmm. those designs are distinct enough to where you can tell they're from different worlds already, mm -hmm. but when you combine the Smash Bros. film, I think a unifying art style would help make that, like, jarring differences between them easier to swallow just like the game does again the oh, yeah. game already does this so that's why yeah. just go back to the exact template let well, and if it's and also too we don't need to trust other studios because nintendo now has an in-house internal animation division okay that's well why did they go to illumination then that's that's true we, right, remember right, but, no but, hold like, on that happened afterwards they went to illumination and then they decided to open up their own division after the film so i think they were like we could just do this ourselves or yeah we don't, so i mean i mean I want to wait to see what kind of stuff that they do, because like I mean, I mean, not I'm not saying that you have to have something drawing like you know, like what was mentioned earlier, like a, a real, real life human, you know, Samus next to like yeah. Illumination Mario, but you could have, you know, you can you can suspend that disbelief if you have like say like a DreamWorks realistic Samus next to like an Illumination Mario. That's a little more easier to digest you know mm -hmm. if you consider like how dreamworks designs their humans versus how illumination designs their humans yeah because like, I, think I feel like not having to worry about like having real life actors work alongside like full-on yeah not, you don't just, have to do a rabbit rabbit. characters yeah, i gotta do space jam <laughs> yeah i wouldn't mind that though because i'm like at this point i mean i don't want there to be a smash bros movie personally like i think it'd be entertaining to have happen but i don't i'm kind of tired of Everything needs to be a giant franchise now. I just like the idea of these being little itty bitty movies we get every couple of years. You can't have a little itty bitty because this is one of the biggest video game franchises of all time. No, that's not, true. Not to mention that we're stay we're, humble. We're all. Sure. I, I feel like Nintendo's we're all sort of like doesn't spoiled. know humble. We're sort of spoiled with a bunch of like major movie franchises at this point. Like we've been spoiled. We're oversaturated. I don't want we've the video games to go the same way. Marvel. That's we've true. been spoiled with DC. And so we're, we're kind of trying to look, since Marvel hasn't really been doing well, like with their movies as of like the past like year and a half or so, we're kind of at this point trying to look for something that's like easier to di digest and easier to like get more involved with. And I feel like with the major success of the Mario movie, I feel like we're all sort of feeling like, you know, since they're coming out with, you know, Yoshi is going to be in the next Mario film, which is potentially going to be Yoshi's Island. I don't know, but since yeah. we're now seeing that as its own independent franchise now we're sort of seeing as like what all of these other franchises could come in and do so that we mm. could potentially see a smash bros universe you know and it's not like you know it's confirmed that this is going to happen this yeah, is it's all not, just it's not, theory crafting at the end of the all day. speculation yeah and it's it's not it's not like a requirement like they can do a legend of zelda movie or a series of movies like personally i would love it if they did like a movie for each game and like actually had them all tied together i personally mm. i would love that that, but, would, that would be great but, you know you don't you don't or a mini series right well that too it would i think it probably would be better as a show rather than a series of movies but yeah you know i could totally see like legend of zelda being like the nintendo equivalent of like the lord of the rings films but oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah that'd be pretty like, interesting Mm -hmm. yeah but again, like it, I go back to um what i said like with this being a shared universe like the one of the biggest complaints with the marvel for example is that everything is so interconnected where it's like you can't miss one without being confused about what happens in another project and you, I like, built, yeah. you describe the smash Bros. movie the way that you want this to play out you're describing the exact same symptoms of that but like, hold on existence. hold on let me finish then let me finish though because as i said with these different properties they don't have to worry about movies cr crossing over because they're in their own little universe so if you don't want to follow um the mario franchise you don't have to you can follow what you want they could just do have zelda be its own story in its own universe metroid could be its own thing in its own universe mario could be its own thing in its own universe and you don't have to worry about having them interconnect and cross over because that's not what happens with nintendo properties and then when they have the big culmination of smash brothers i think they'll have a story that people can understand without having to go 
to the other movies for you to understand what's going on because we're talking about different properties and different dimensions. So I think oh. they'll have like a, a simple story for the Smash Brothers for people well, to Yeah, you you could do the the simple the simple plot of like, you know, figures come come to life like uh Smash 64. And like or you, or have... you could do it as like, you know, Master Hand. You could sort of like make Master and Crazy Hands as sort of like the main aspect of or like the main characters and the main villains of the smash bros films and they somehow like have seen all of the adventures that mario zelda kirby Star right, Fox, and they just bring them all together Metroid had been through and then you just go into their universes and you just want to like see them duke it out because that's mm -hmm. really what smash bros is that's, mm -hmm. that's really what it is so I mean, yeah i mean the smash bros essentially boils down to a kid with a bunch of action figures making him fight but exactly right. so that's where i feel like this universe could have more of an advantage than other cinematic universe because they're not tied to continuity they're, or they don't have to be tied to continuity like the other universes are right because despite Despite yeah, Smash Brothers existing, you don't you, you don't see like in you know Breath of the Wild like Zelda sitting there like oh you know or like like that one time where you were on battlefield fighting. <laughs> <laughs> right, that, 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 that doesn't happen. Right. Now yeah. um, we did talk earlier uh, briefly about uh, the possibility of Sonic and Pokemon, and that's where I feel like there there might be some issues with that because for one thing. The Pokemon company decided to give the distribution rights to Warner Brothers for the moment, and they're going to do more stuff with the Detective Pikachu franchise. So if they want to do like a reboot mm -hmm. animated or whatever, of uh, like a true Pokemon movie, I don't know if we'll see that for a few years if they wanted to have that be in the Nintendo universe. And also yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog. Well, first of all, that's not even a Nintendo property. That's a Sega property. And then also it's owned by Paramount. So for them to use that in their in their Nintendo set of films, they probably need to figure out some sort of deal with them, which right. might be which, very difficult like, as well. So, yeah. which, One like, strong... that, that is that is possible, though it, it is going to be like a huge financial ordeal doing all that. Like you know, especially if you get into like some of the like if they do either one big smash movie or multiple ones if you start to get into like third party characters like oh we want snake in this movie or we want mega man or sora in this movie good lord if they want to go to disney <laughs> or something uh, good oh lord, yeah good luck trying to go to disney and yeah and being like having oh, can them, we use sora like, for this movie <laughs> like hell no <laughs> without without disney asking yeah can we buy out right. your company or right 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 disney, yeah disney sitting there like okay you can use sora if you make elsa mm -hmm. a main character too <laughs> I, i'm gonna yeah. be percent of your earnings <laughs> well disney well you know what disney would do is they would just be like oh no 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 nintendo you're you're like the disney of video games so you know you should just hand over those delicious properties to us they, and they, we'll make they, movies they, for they, you they, come they'd on be, they'd be just, sitting there they'd, they'd be sitting there like okay we can do this if you make epic mickey 3. <laughs> no, yeah, the trade of the century. Sora, Sora needs to have just as much screen time right. as Mario, right. and you need to have Link. you need to have Mickey save well, the day with a Keyblade. I mean, <laughs> the last time that, again, Capcom worked with Disney, and Disney was literally like, "You can't show Capcom characters beating Marvel superheroes." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is stupid. It's a fighting game. What do you mm -hmm. mean you can't have mm -hmm. Marvel characters lose to like? the the capcom characters yeah god That's yeah imagine, imagine that deal where they're like okay you know yeah we'll work in this movie you said capcom's also in this yeah yeah cool you mean, you mean to tell uh, me that cyclops couldn't fucking beat dante yeah yeah you're gonna be sitting there with like that smash bros movie deal and they're like oh you know yeah you want to use Sora? okay that's fine yeah you said Sora capcom, can't lose Sora wins yeah yeah they're gonna be sitting there like yeah. Hey, yeah yeah you said you said capcom's in the movie right all right yeah yeah cool so Sora's gonna fight mega man he's gonna win also you have to use the fat mega man from uh from from the box uh, art yeah. Yeah, from, no, from Bad um, box art Mega, from, uh, Mega Man. From uh, what was it? I think it was Tekken versus Street Fighter. Yeah, it's just had... Bad Box Art Mega Man. That's well, yeah, all he yeah. is. But, like they had like an actual Mega Man. Yeah, like a fighting game that was like it was like he was like a it was slide. yeah Tekken versus Street Fighter has yeah. box art Mega Man. Yeah, it's like the same thing with Paramount. It's like oh, you want to use Sonic, eh? Well, guess what? He can't lose to Mario. He has to mm -hmm. save. Had the same amount of screen time. He has to save today. Uh, mm -hmm. sorry, you can't use Knuckles. You can't oh. use Tails. Nope. Yeah. Sorry. But... Yeah, well, it's say. funny. They already used again. Sonic already came with stipulations from Sega. Again, the problem now would be like Film again, getting all the studios to agree, getting the actors in the studios to intermingle, yes. getting um, 
because that's the thing is that you can get all these big casts for like one-off projects that's why i'm like really discouraging of again i i'm not even not to be cynical i really don't want there like i want yep. each nintendo film to get space to breathe i just wouldn't want them to cross over at all like i just yeah, yeah i mean i just keep thinking to myself it, it hampers that it just hampers any artistic individuality of like these things yeah like smash I mean, bros is great in the video game world where we could because smash bros has evolved from just being nintendo properties to a celebration of video games as a whole mm -hmm. that's why i love ultimate so much all the spirits all this like everything that comes up in that and mm -hmm. the mario movie has hints of that energy like they, again they one of the references is to discoon again the famicom disc system icon uh that used to they, their old their old icon for just their old first console that type of nod is a deep cut it's a it's a it's a mm -hmm. nod to the early lineage of nintendo mm -hmm. the black box game posters mm -hmm. the duck hunt restaurant in the background mm -hmm. all these things paint a legacy of nintendo but there the thing is those things are also within the mario universe separated like kid icarus popping up as a video game kind of dismisses that like there's going to be a, well, you know, kid icarus would work as a film because it's just like, it would just be class of the titans but funny mm -hmm. really like i'm not saying it's the popular franchise but i'm like that would be because that's also the thing is it, you were looking at from a spiritual like not spiritual but like a what are the optics of adapting each franchise i was like thinking metroid is the hardest to adapt because that would so not jive with everything else you have kid icarus that would like be at least it could still be a little dark because that game is still a little dark but funny mm. black comedy you can kind of play kid icarus like that angle like basically yeah, it, the whole vibe yeah. of the film would be that luma honestly where it's just constantly like bleak situations juxtaposed against kid icarus needs a credit card in order to buy items that he could take out a loan and, and get killed for it right yeah. and then here's my question i don't know if you guys even wanted this but like did you how did you want characters like pikmin and mr game and watch and duck hunt to be in the movie how can they do that if they that, if that's, you that's something that i was going to mention a little bit earlier is that like uh, on my uh list i had like the uh the tier the tier of like you know they would only appear in smash bros movies and okay. with pick with pikmin you you could do like a little like a mm -hmm. mini series or like a little mini movie you like could do a, a short movie with Pikmin. about Pikmin. Like you could get away with that, but like okay. with properties like like Duck Hunt, Game and Watch, Rob. Like you, Rob. Could, I guess you could put Rob in like a Mario movie again because he he appeared in Mario Kart DS. But it, properties like that could only appear in just Smash Bros. movies. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I think like, I guess Earthbound would be like really that too. Weird stuff with Game and Watch. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like Earthbound would have to be there, where it's like only appears in the Smash Bros. movie because. We, we don't need to... Okay, I think you could, again, in my opinion, you could do a really good Earthbound movie because it's already a coming-of-age story. It would just be a Pixar film done by Illumination. It'd be interesting to see what they would do with that idea. Also, mm. I, I do want to bring attention to the fact that there, wa there was a rumor that the director of the Sonic movies had expressed interest in directing a Smash Bros. movie. Yeah. And one Call him up. Well, Call I him actually up. don't want that to happen because, okay, the thing that makes the Mario movie really good to me is that it doesn't compromise on the video gaminess of it. Now, let's say the Sonic movies are bad at all. Like, I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is the fact that they have Donut Lord, and it, I don't mind that they exist, but when I go to see a Sonic movie, there is this lack of confidence in Sonic as, like, it's almost as if they're like, no one would just watch the film with Sonic characters in it. We got to have human actors and human people. I don't want him touching it because I feel like he'd make the same mistake where he would take out the video gaminess of it. Like the Sonic movie doesn't use Sonic's soundtracks. The Sonic movie foregoes some of the identity of the series. Not all of it, it does preserve a lot. Like Knuckles and Tails being there is great. Getting Tails' voice actors to come back is fantastic. And it, that's why I like Sonic movie 2 more than one is that it's more video gamey than the first one. But... The fact that those films made that decision to me was a terrible cr creative choice. It turned out okay, mm -hmm. but like that's still a huge blow to me. And I'm like, I don't want, I feel like Smash Bros would absolutely have a weird juxtaposition of like a human character, like an Andy type playing with the toys. And that the mm -hmm. story's more about that and the Smash Bros figures fighting to help him. It would be this weird thing where they're like, they wouldn't just believe that these characters can sell box office seats on their own. This movie had the confidence to commit to that. 
Well, okay, so so here's the thing about that though, um, because like as as we established with the with the Smash Brothers games, like there is very little story with with them bringing all these characters together as one, you know, and so we, we are we, yeah, so it's understandable how, how you'd be dubious for them doing a Smash Brothers movie, and you're just talking about they don't embrace the video game isms with the Sonic movies enough, but. I think you uh, it's just somebody... I wouldn't want Jeff Dollar touching it. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing though. I think you probably could use somebody like a Jeff Fowler to be able to balance the stuff with the video game inspirations but and this make movie something... is right oh, here no, showing no, that <laughs> making it accessible for mainstream movie going audience. They got lucky with this Mario film, but I... they can't do this for every property. They can't, especially with certain properties that have more story, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like you with something like uh, something as big as a Smash Brothers, you can't just have it depend on the on the video game stuff because that has even less story or just as much as no story as Mario. So in order for them to be able to balance all these different characters in this one film, you got to have somebody that understands the video game property, but also understands they need to bring casual moviegoers in. You have to have a balance with that. So I don't think it would be a bad bad choice to do that if they decided to bring them in. You know. I mean, I could see that. I mean, I think for me, a big part of it too. Again, I can see your point, and I can concede that, like, yeah, you're right that they have less story. But the thing is, the Smash Bros. games do try to incorporate a vaguer story. But all you have to do for me, for me, it's like there's two ways to look at the situation for this. It's like the same thing that they came up with for the Clue film, because as the James Summerton video goes into this really well, where there's two ways to approach this. You either make a by the books film that hems too closely to the material, lacks story and lacks details, or you look at it as a creative vacuum where you can shove in any idea that works. And we, what it is for me, would, it would be more about picking the right director who has the right idea that strikes a balance. I don't think, again, I'm not saying Jeff Fowler couldn't. Like, I have, like, if it, if you it got announced, I'd be like, maybe he could do it. But I feel like this film is way more what I would want. And it's, I think you're saying like it can't happen. It literally just happened. And it's the first time it's happened. It's just the first video game movie to not, again, the only one I can think of is the Sonic movie they did for um, the OVA. And that was more oh, like a yeah. cult. Yeah. That was like the last time I could think of. And the thing is, that was like a cult classic because it doesn't have weird stuff in it aside from the cat girl. But like, aside from that one compromise, product of the times, man. <laughs> Product of the times, yeah. <laughs> but like, aside from that one compromise, that's to me again my favorite Ma Mega Man like mini series that they did. The reason oh, why man. I liked that yeah. so much was because when it came, at least they had the problem of Mega Man's in the real world, but all the best parts are when Mega Man is just being himself and being adorable. It's like they commit to the video gaminess, so they're like, oh, he drinks e tanks. Like you can have you can have it all if you're clever, but for the most part. The one strategy that hasn't been done the most, which this film finally did, was commit to just preserving the tone of a video game and still adding a story. This movie adds plenty of story. The problem with the film is, is the, the big problem with the film is the pacing. And also, too, the underdeveloped Luigi. Like, I really would have liked to have seen a B plot where Luigi is just sneaking around the castle. Everything in this film ties into the A plot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. You can see, like everything in the film, it, the big problem with this movie is that everything it is only an A plot. There's no B plot. But okay. But yeah, for the Smash Bros. film idea, I just I'm not vehemently opposed. Like if we eventually get there, we get there. But I'm just thinking to myself, how do we preserve the identity of each of these games and appeal to the mainstream masses? Because the thing about these games is that to me, they're already cool enough as it is. Mm. You don't need to distort yourself to fit into the mainstream view like that's what makes them different like marvel films leaning the further they got away from the comics in terms of like the further, the further they get away from that and more into we're worried about our own inner continuity everything's a reference to everything the more esoteric it became the way more like stressed out and stretched out it became the quality got lower because you're constantly undercutting your writers forcing them to shoehorn things in and if we keep visualizing Nintendo films as having to interconnect in any way, I think we'll end up back at the same square. So I think yeah. Nintendo is unique in that maybe they could do a really dark, gritty Metroid film, but still have it under the Nintendo label. 
it's the one thing that can make them stand out from DC and Marvel, where they those two companies have an issue of wanting their films to connect and have a uniform tone. Nintendo really doesn't need to go there. Well, I feel like that's the like Smash Bros. would be the only movie where they have to worry about having a consistent tone or whatever or a consistent timeline. Like Lily, I'm saying like they could kill Link in a Zelda movie, but that won't matter for a Smash Bros. They could because they could take it at any yeah. point in the timeline. <laughs> yeah, I, mean? mm-hmm. I see that. But, Which is kind of the the idea of where, like, you know, Smash Bros. could sort of be, like, its own individual story from anything else without having to feel like, you know, it's an Avengers film where all of these heroes are coming together. Coming together. There's no power pose in all the female Smash Bros. characters. No, please don't. (laughs) It's a a little bit different in that aspect because, you know, the characters that we've seen in previous properties before... They don't really affect anything that happened in the Smash Bros. universe. You know, it's its own individual thing from anything else that we've seen before. The other stuff that we've seen were just to introduce the characters. And if you don't want to see that, then you could just go right into the Smash Bros. movie without even mm-hmm. having to go and see, you know, the Mario movie first and then the Metroid movie and then the Kirby movie. You could just get right into the Smash Bros. movie because you know all of these characters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we spent all this time talking about other Nintendo properties, but we haven't talked about the the stuff that could actually spin off from the Mario movie. So, what movies do you want to see spin off from Mario, and what do you think they're actually going to do for the for the spin off from Mario? Uh, Donkey Kong and Yoshi. I, f- I feel Mario like Mario Galaxy, and I want Rosalina. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I want. I want to see. Yeah, I want to see Mario Galaxy. I feel like the next one is pro. Uh, what they're probably going to do next is, uh, yeah, like probably something with like Yoshi's Island. Um, I think the next one will be Yoshi's Island, and I want yeah. if you know honestly, the Mario sequel. I want for y- the Mario sequel. I want them to bring in Daisy. Yeah, I was, honestly, Hi, I'm Daisy. It was, uh, honestly, it was a, I want them. It was still a weird choice that they didn't put her in yeah, this film. Hon- honestly, hey, you gotta wait. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta I, let I, it. You gotta honestly, let it. Honestly, a, spin, a but... spinoff that I actually want to see is something involving Wario, whether that's a WarioWare type deal or it's like Wario World. A, we need to have Wario. And Wario. Wario. Yeah. We have need of we have need of Dane DeVito, Morio, and I, Willem I, Dafoe, yeah, Waluigi. I feel, I feel like I feel like that would have to be yep yep. I feel like that would have to be the choice. I know um, there was one thing where I think Chris Pratt was saying that he wanted like Pedro Pascal. I was like no no no. Yeah, no, 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 no Jack no, Black no, saying no. he wanted Pedro Pascal. I'm like nope, don't yeah, need yeah, Pedro Pascal. No 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 no. no Danny DeVito. <laughs> Danny DeVito is Wario, and we need to have Waluigi as Willem Dafoe, so he's got the creepy Which, voice. I, I I agree with that actually. Honestly. And, who, I just got I just got shocked by Chris Pratt. So whoever is the right voice for Wario and Waluigi, if they're good, I mean, they're good. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? let, yeah. Let let them cook. Let them cook. They know what they're doing. Yeah, they know what they're doing. But like, but, yeah. but apparently Seth Rogen was the wrong choice. I mean, I, I don't know. He's not the wrong choice, but he wasn't the right choice. <laughs> yeah, I, I think he was. <laughs> there was a better choice, but it was it wasn't the wrong answer. But there was a better answer. Like yeah, it who? wasn't the wrong answer, but it was a better answer. I don't uh, know, man. The... Exactly. I don't. <laughs> Like I, 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 I mean, think, to be I think, fair, I, I think mean, he was the perfect choice. I mean, to be fair, like um, going in, like I didn't think Donkey Kong really talked that much, so it was a shock that they got Seth Rogen in the first place. So, I mean, were you expecting him to not talk though? Well, maybe say a couple of words because I'm going off a of Mario Kart where he just said a couple of words. <laughs> so I'm he, like, he's a ma- he's a major Nintendo character that's in. A, a, a Mario movie where they interact, and, and it's also a movie done by Illumination. Uh, yeah, mm. he, he was he was kind of bound to be a big character in the yeah. film. So everybody if he only got, got like two talk. lines, and uh, did you want to count that uh, that really awful Donkey Kong Country movie that came out like a long time ago? We don't TV show. You mean we 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 don't. Well, we the, don't talk. There was a movie and then a TV show. Yeah, what we, the we, fuck? We don't we don't talk yeah. about that. <laughs> I, I already, I already mentioned. I didn't like that. I'm, 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 go, I'm, a, I'm transcending my mortal form at that information. You don't, don't, don't look it up. You'll be scarred for life. Just Banana cream what year pie. Year did it come out? No, 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 no. No, tell me um, right now. I'm looking it up. Nineteen something. It came like, out not too long after the live action Mario Brothers. Movie. Yeah. Oh, you know what they should do? We oh, wait, like listen 90s. instead of okay. Listen, guys, we guys, we need to go to Captain N. That's just Smash Bros. Right there. Captain N. Oh well. well I mean, you already got it. There you go. There you go. Wow, mega wow. <laughs> that's mega that's wow. how the film opens up. Oh, here's a question for you guys, because like this has been a uh, the point of debate. 
uh, if they're going to do this Legend of Zelda movie. Uh, yay or nay for Link to talk? Yay. 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 You can get. I know. I know, I know. He's meant to canonically yay. be like the the silent swordsman and everything. You you and could you could honestly he, work either way, but I mean, yeah. Like, like I mean, if, if there's a way if, where you can make it so that Link doesn't really talk all that much, then go for it. I mean, I mean, the thing is, if if the show Puka could work with with having Garu, one of the main ninjas, uh, be silent throughout like pretty much the entire thing, you can do it. You can do it, but I, I I feel like that would add more to his, especially if he did something like Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask or something that ties Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask to like Twilight Princess because those games are directly connected. I feel like letting him talk, like one of one example I'm going to call upon. There's a web series. If anyone hasn't seen it, I recommend you check it out called Legend of Zelda A Hero's Purpose. It ties Majora's Mask to Twilight Princess. They essentially have Link talking throughout that thing through text boxes, but he talks. And like there's an actual voice actor for No, 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 no. There's no oh, voice actors for the for any of it at all. But like you essentially have Link talking through text boxes along with everyone else. And it's like I feel like in order for a Legend of Zelda movie to like like not in order for it to work, but I feel like it would work better if you have him talk. You can have it work without it, but yeah. I feel like it would work better with him talking. Yes. Honestly, you're one of the few people I've heard that said that they're okay with Link talking. Because like most people I hear, when it's like, they better not talk! He better not say a word! I'm now, like, now, well, I again, will say... There's also the same people... These are also the same people that didn't want Mario to talk all mm -hmm. that much. Because mm -hmm. all he could say was, it's a me, Mario. Mm -hmm. well, I did not I, want that Italian no, accent. I don't no, care what any yeah. of you guys yeah, say. People didn't no, really no, want that much of an no. accent throughout the entire movie. Anyway. I, no, I will Personally, say... Personally, I think... Gives it. You go ahead first. Okay. Uh, I will say, don't get Tom Holland to voice him. Do not. No. <laughs> don't no. Get Tom, no. Yeah. Please, nope. no. At this point, nope. he's overrated. Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah, especially after um uninspired. I mean, uninteresting. Yes. Like, I mean, unfarted. Like, I mean, uncharted. Like, I, like I don't know, man. Get someone God. like like David K to voice him or something, man. I don't like like. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm. I'm indifferent about him talking. Like I would, I would be more impressed if they figured out how to creatively how they can make him a good character without him talking. Like I'll be more, I'll be more impressed that they would if they tried that. But if he does speak, I don't care. It's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm either way. I mean, as long as they don't do like a excuse me, princess. Excuse you know, me, that princess. Was, sorry, I'm sorry. That's delightful. What are you talking about? The show is amazing. It's perfect. It's the best Dude, cartoon ever made. To, I, 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 they I, I, need that. to do a callback to that. If they do a callback to that movie, it's automatically look, a plus. Look, look, there. look, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. They need to have at least one callback to Zelda CDI, and it needs to be Ganon going. It sure is die. boring around here. <laughs> Either that or you have a, a wizard going like squat a la or something like that. Or... Squat a la, we yeah. are off. You just yeah. hear that. You're like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. Or the ship sails in the morning. Yeah, or you have like <laughs> uh, or you have like a knight that's decked out in all blue going up to Link being like, now you must die. Yeah, oh god bless. <laughs> I mean we kind of had something like that in the Mario movie. Now you die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like like but like you we need must... to have all the like weird jarring movements from Zelda CDI for that. We, we need to have Zelda kill somebody and they scream, You killed me, and she just yeah. goes, Good. In a Either, voice. You know what? No, 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 no. The perfect reference. The perfect reference to CDI that they should do in a Zelda movie is having a shopkeeper that goes, you know, arrows, bombs, you want yeah. it? It's yours, my friend. Right. But only if you have the, but only for the Ru right rubies. Come back when you're a little mm, richer. richer. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> God damn it, I'm thinking about it. Just a deaf Zelda CDI. We just need to commit to this now. <laughs> It, it, you hear what we want. <laughs> well, actually, oh, speaking of, okay, there's a, I was joking with that, but honestly, a good way. So, okay, there's this, there's a video called um, uh, Zelda CDI RTX on. It's a joke about like ray tracing stuff like that. Yeah. But it's a really, it's the shopkeeper with like really like done in like a high I CG look. That, yeah, yeah, and I'm like, you know, Zelda could work like that actually. It could, but I feel like it would work better as a cel shaded movie. I, uh, yeah, I honestly would love to see Toon Link. Yeah, it's a good link. Uh, 
I feel like the, eventually, Elf eventually, World, yes. Elf World movie or something. Yeah, Young eventually. Link first. Yes, Young yeah, Link. yes. Young Link first. Yeah. I'll create a time would be such an epic film, but I'm almost like it should work better as a mini series because I kind of would want each temple to have an episode. It would, but you could, you could give it the Lord of the Rings treatment and make it like three hours long. <laughs> they yeah. will not make an animated three movie hours? three That's hours long. Generous. They yeah, we could do it. Like a three-hour Lord of the Ring film? That's short, bro. I mean, I'm not yeah. gonna lie, Lord of the, like, Legend of Zelda does have... <sighs> I, 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 I gotta get up to work in the morning, but I was gonna say, Zelda has that mythic quality that Lord of the Rings does have. I'm, I'm saying where, it would be the Lord of the Rings and yeah. the Nintendo films. You can enjoy that. I could. I would actually watch that for a couple hours, because you're telling a big story. It's worth it. Yeah, yeah. It's a long game. Well, it, if they it, make it animated, there's no way they're making it three hours long. I know. No I, the budget would be able to handle it, but I would want it so bad. I know, but it would, like, man. All right, at the you'd very least, they make two hours. At the very least, they at the very least they make a series, and then someone super cuts it to like sixteen hours. That's yes. <laughs> With it's everything the, the that happens cut. in Breath of yeah. the Wild. Yes. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Well, I think that just about concludes our spoiler review of Super Mario Brothers. Comment down below your thoughts on the movie. What were your favorite parts of the film? What were your least favorite parts of the movie? What were all the Easter eggs and callbacks that you saw? What do you want to see in the uh, su future Super Mario projects? What do you want to see in the future of the Nintendo Cinematic Universe that I'm pretty sure is inevitable by now? Comment all your thoughts down below and let us know. All right. Time to plug your stuff. Go ahead, Ruby. Oh, boy. Uh, Y'all already know where to find me, but in case you guys don't know, uh, you can find me on Twitch with, uh, what is it, twitch.tv slash rubygrooby. You can find me on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash c slash rubygrooby. Uh, I'm on Twitter. You can see my at right here, at rubygroobylive. Instagram, same at. Uh, I also plan to have my uh, Discord up at some point as well so that we can... Uh, get more involved with uh, conversations about a potential Smash Bros. cinematic universe if it ever ends up happening, which if it ever does, don't let it happen in, in this decade. <laughs> it doesn't happen in this decade. I gave you my 40s. The, st the streets ain't ready for it. They're, they're not. They're really not. Get yeah, look like out. 2031. <laughs> look out, Disney. You got some competition now. Mm -hmm. it, it, honestly, if you play your cards right, if you, play, if you know how to play poker at like next level, then yeah. Yeah, once we get you may food, actually yeah. have competition. Yeah, once we get full dive technology. But yeah, that's where you'll <laughs> find me. Oh boy. All right, Big B, next. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you can find me uh, mainly on YouTube over down there, Red, White, and Blue Streak. Uh, I do figure reviews, Transformer reviews. I'm going to be putting out some SH Figure Arts reviews here soon. But yeah, so, uh, you know, you can find me there, mainly. <laughs> All right, and finally, Beefalo. All right, just uh, if you're looking for me on Twitter, just Saint Beefalo there. Also, uh, Saint Beefalo on pretty much everything like Twitch, uh, Twitch.tv slash Saint Beefalo will bring you to me. And uh, yeah, I think it's yeah, Tumblr, Saint Beefalo will also get, drag you to me. So yeah, I think those are the main things. Cool, cool, cool. Well, if you guys enjoyed this uh, podcast, at first I thought it was just going to be regular spoiler review, but what, but as of right now, while you're watching this, this will turn out to be an in-depth dialysis podcast because we went two, uh, two and a half hours, so that's fine. <laughs> Way <laughs> over a limit, but that's okay. Yeah. Fun fact, when I, when I started this podcast, I said, we're going to be under an hour. That did not happen at all, and that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, hey, you're funny. Yeah, I, we still had a great discussion, so Guess what? This is an in-depth analysis podcast, but you guys already know that by now because it's already edited and everything. But um, if you guys enjoyed this podcast, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel We're on the road to 500 subscribers. I appreciate you guys getting me to 462. Ooh. We're getting up there. So please don't be a ninja watcher. Please like the video, comment, Damn. subscribe. Yes, it helps a lot in the algorithm. You, if you watch more than three of my videos and you have not subscribed, you and I, we, we got problems. We got problems. Fake so fan over here. 
big fans <laughs> over here. So please subscribe to the channel. Um, so what's the new coming down the pipeline? Well, we're, we're continuing talking about the Transformers movies, Big B and I. Next week, we'll be talking about Transformers Age of Extinction. Man. <laughs> <laughs> the depression. Kick yeah, man. One. This is where true depression gets next week. <laughs> Tune in for that. I'll have fun tearing in a new one. Oh boy, yes indeed. Leading up to Transformers Rise of the Beast coming out in June. Uh, the Indian... Good. Yeah, please, please, for the love of God, be good. Um, we're gonna start the Indiana Jones reviews pretty soon. Uh, if gentlemen, if you guys want to join, Ooh. we can we can talk yes, about please. that. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, okay. Uh, so that'll be coming down the pipeline. Yes, we're going to continue the Wizarding World reviews. I'm trying to trying to get the band back so we can continue with Chamber Secrets, and then also. We have some unfinished business with Star Wars, gentlemen. We got to talk about the Bad Batch in season three of The Mandalorian. I haven't sure. started either of them. Yeah, I'm neither am I. Neither am I. It's time to binge. It's time to binge, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So tune in for those when it comes out. And then, uh, yeah, a bunch of stuff just coming out, man. A bunch of movies. Uh, Spider Man. Across the Spider Verse, I'm gonna get a review of Renfield up because I know that came out. Evil Dead Rise came is coming out this weekend as well, so do a review for that. So a lot of things coming down the pipeline. So if you want to hear my crazy takes on things, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell if you want to be notified on future videos I'll be doing. But that's all we have for you, Nintendo fans, and we will see you guys next time. Talk to you guys later. Peach. Bye. I'm gonna lie. Thank you so much for playing my game. Peaches, peaches, peaches.